Rock God Week. On the Bennington Show, I'm Ron Bennington. There's Gail Bennington. Yo. And I am Ron Bennington. Hmm. Uh, if you uh, look up on the Twitter tweets today, uh, you will see Chris sent us a picture of him going into court. Uh, classing it up, according to him. Ah, uh, Jackie Gleason's back. Yeah. This is old Jackie Gleason look. He does have that Gleason look that got him quite a few ladies on the old Tinder. Uh, Vito, you lo- you're leaning in like you have something to add. <clears throat> just, just leaning, just, just <laughs> listening leaning. closely, just listening really oh, okay, closely. Good. <laughs> There's the picture of Chris. He's wetted down the hair, massive pair of fucking sunglasses, <laughs> and the now ever present cigarette. Which I hope he doesn't smoke in court because he does that French inhale thing like a child. Yeah, it's very weird, like a teen girl. I don't even know if I'd say teen. I think that's your sixth grade smoking thing. <laughs> when people say, you don't even French inhale. You're like, what? Yeah, I tried to explain that to him, that it's a it's a bit feminine. Mm. And he does not understand. But there he is. He's, he's matted down the hair with his uh, product or just water. Yeah. Hopefully not just water, because that's going to poof up real fast in this heat. That's not product, because he'd have to own product. Uh, so he'll be straight poof. But at least he knows that his head's fucking, his hair yeah. is high for court. I mean, they, they like a nice, low hair in court. Um, I was with him last night. We did the Unmasked with Tim and Eric, which the Tim and Eric fans rushed to me after going, they don't normally talk this way. Yes. Uh, we thought they were going to break the place up. <laughs> and then people said, what would you do if they broke the place up? I go, I don't own this fucking furniture and these mics. I don't care. Yeah. I'm not um, Mr. Serious XM. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Let Frank XM worry about that. But they're super funny, but very surprisingly professional. Very professional. Very. Uh, but you know what? You can't produce as many shows no. as they have and not be professional. Now, today, our friend uh, Ari Shafir has a two-part special, Double Negative. It's now streaming on Netflix. So both of them, I guess, are going up today. I thought one was going up today and maybe one later, but I'm not. Oh, none of us are sure. Yeah, I'm, both, 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 both are coming out today. Okay, wow. Cool. I've never even heard of that done before. That's so much Ari. Well, like Chappelle's both came out in one day. Okay. So I've only heard of this happening once. <laughs> I guess. Still highly unusual. <laughs> um, so it's a double because they connect to each other. One is childhoods. The other is adulthoods. Nice. I look at that Stanley pick and I just, it, it screams Vegas. <laughs> no, you know what? I'm going to be honest. It screams Reno. It's not quite, yes. it's not quite Vegas. Look at the length of the ash on that thing. Yeah. <laughs> Not he needs to give that thing a flick. <laughs> I T- hope he doesn't wear the shades in the in the courtroom, though. TC Flag says, I predict uh, jail for... Uh, Contempt of court. That's easy money, bro. Nobody's taking that bet. Nobody yeah. would bet against that. No matter what the price. Yeah. I mean, even if he's just over celebrating, like he's in the end zone, <laughs> he's just doing the dirty bird. He says, Give me a Diablo sandwich, a Dr. Pepper, make it quick. What the fuck, Sam? Ace Ralstein has a court appearance and fear and bloating in Las Vegas. Okay, that's, that's just mean. That's just, yeah. That's, that's just cruel. We're, we're backing him today. <laughs> we're backing him because it could mean a sweet 1500 for me. I know. Another Jibo for... <laughs> and by the way, if that happens, I know uh, both Jen and Vito feel left out. I'm going to give you a taste. You're each going to get 50 or maybe even 25. Okay. Okay. Depending on how I'm feeling. 2500 or $25? dollars Huh? <laughs> Twenty five hundred or twenty five dollars. I'm not getting even getting twenty five hundred myself. Oh, what I thought you were. You know what? You're out. What, whatever happens. Now that's on the eight mil. No, oh. we we decided that's impossible. <laughs> we talked about it yesterday. We dropped our expectations <sighs> down. We don't think the eight mil is happening. <laughs> this said Alec, dreams. Uh, this one says Alec Baldwin really let himself go. No tie. What's he going to hang himself <laughs> with when the judge laughs him out of the room? Look who just lumbered in. Um, 
there's a man that's going to be $54 richer this afternoon. I do know this. So we all went outside and had a little smoke. Yeah. Um, not only did I do uh, the unmasked yesterday, but I wanted to go down and plug with Soder that he was going to be in Montreal with us for Comedy 101. Mr. Nick DiPaolo sees me. He gives me a wave in. I am spending too much time. Get back down to the bonfire. Some fucking prick tweeted to them that I was over here, right? <laughs> so tale. I was getting the, you know, I was getting the fucking stink eye from all them. And uh, then went down and Chris comes in and he's sweating. We're having a little <laughs> cigarette. He's just, he's sweating profusely. And he says he had just talked to his lawyer and his lawyer said to him, they got us over a barrel. <laughs> How could that even happen? You haven't even went to court. <laughs> this is not good. I mean, when he said that, I knew that eight mil was off the table. Yeah, like, we're definitely not, not even, getting eight mil. This guy's not even trying. Uh, Adam says, why does this pick remind me of Michael Manson? Well, there is no Michael Manson. Probably why. Maybe it's a guy <laughs> in your neighborhood. Well, he I don't know like him. A 70s grandfather. Is that hair slicked back on purpose <laughs> or just no time for a shower this morning? Is that Ronnie Millsap's alcoholic cousin or rejected blue blocker ad? Some of these are just mean. <laughs> Jeremiah, Delaware, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing fantastic. Hello, Pennington family, especially you, Ronnie. Um, today, I celebrate uh, six months free, buddy. And uh, I, went to, I went to treatment in Delco. Is that right? And, um, I absolutely did, man. <laughs> Everything you talk about in treatment, so uh, take that in. Um, but you guys have been such an inspiration to me on hard days, um, all good days, showing me that uh, you're still showing up and living life, man, and you're having fun, and you've got a great wit about you, showing me that life didn't have to end when that did. Life can actually begin. So I'm, I'm truly grateful for you guys. Thank you. Congratulations to you, my man. Six months. That's great. Uh, check back in anytime. Uh, here's our old buddy, John in Virginia. John. Guys, what's happening? And ladies. What's up? Hey. Well, I got to stop hashtag. I got to stop hashtagging my pictures. I guess you all, because Ronnie didn't think I'm you. I don't know what you mean. I posted pictures of my vacation at the beach, and somebody called up the next show and said, you have a beautiful family. Oh, yeah, you, you got to stop uh. calling yourself Bennington family. You got to get out of that. I, that was on DePaulo's show last night. Oh yep. my God. I just thought it was fucking pure madness. Well, you know, Jimmy had texted me uh, when your mom passed away, giving me right. condolences. <laughs> and I'm like, he goes, did your mom die? I go, if she did, you're telling me, Jimmy. That's the only way I'm hearing it out. All right. incredibly yeah, you got to change that, dude. It's it's, it's become no. a problem. It's was, become a no, problem. I'm part of the family, though. I've been such a long listener. I, I mean, I, I mean, I should be a cousin. Okay, I'm going to give the cease and desist now. <laughs> Ten four. All right, guys. Uh, peace. Have a great one. Hey. I was listening when that happened, and I was like, what the hell are they talking about? I was like, there's pictures of my family on the internet. All I thought to myself was, man, DePaulo has a dumb audience. (laughs) (laughs) And apparently I'm still right. (laughs) You still kind of are, yeah. Yeah. Poor Nick DePaulo, the healthcare uh, bombs out last night. Yeah. The the wall is really just slats, uh, which haven't been built. <laughs> right. But they're just slats. Picket fence. Yeah. I mean, there's plenty of room in there. You can throw chihuahuas with fucking coke in their mouth through that thing. That's so, adorable. Yeah, but watching that healthcare thing fall down. And then, like, this morning, Trump blamed all the Democrats and some of the Republicans you're like, dude, you never even asked the Democrat a fucking thing. They weren't in one meeting. No. You've got everybody. Everybody there is a Republican. You could win everything. Just like convince your – that's like me going, I couldn't get something passed because fucking Vito and Justin said no to it. I couldn't be like, Don, this place sucks. <laughs> You know what I mean? I got to fucking blame my own house. Vito's leaning in like he's going to say something, like a Big Brother topic or wrestling is going to come up. His fucking favorite thing is if they've ever wrestled inside Big Brother. 
Oh my God! Would there'd that, be no stopping. Them. Would that be the best day for you ever? <laughs> that would be pretty exciting. <sighs> Kara says, "I hope a clean shave gives him at least fifty thousand. It is true; he is all cleaned up. Can I offer you a vacuum cleaner, lady? I feel like with that look, you can't give him nothing. All right, Greg just said you're going to like the way you look. That, gra- <laughs> that uh, <laughs> the men's warehouse. The men's warehouse. <laughs> the fact that he isn't wearing his black suit." Means somebody put on some weight because he looked great in that black suit last time. <laughs> right. That was what a couple of years ago. Uh, yeah, that was about two two years ago. Does that w- w- weird women out how long a man can leave a black suit sitting in his closet? Yeah, it is pretty strange. Like the, that, a man could just wear a suit for years if you don't change or fluctuate much in weight. You could just wear the same suit. Or you suit. just take it to a tailor and have it taken out a little right. bit. You know, well, guys do that all the time. But a black suit, men now treat like it's a tuxedo, right? right? So that black suit stays in the closet, I'm going to tell the truth, for generations. And then you go, I've been to like five funerals in this, three weddings. Like yeah. That's kind of bizarre. <laughs> Couple of court dates. <laughs> the funny thing is most of us have zero memory of when we take the black suit out. But when your chick is like running around like, I got to get something to wear. You're like, don't. I got the black suit. So I got that. And I'm wearing it with comfortable sneakers. <laughs> Because they don't have hard shoes. The fact that you'll hear men use the term hard, hard shoes, shoes will let How you know. After your shoes, <laughs> people have not grown up. That's that's what little boys used to call shoes. Yeah, hard, hard shoes. shoes and itchy church pants. <laughs> <laughs> and for some reason, for little boys, because there's no other main occasion, that just became like your ch- your church your church suit. Dude, one of the things that fucking mothers in my neighborhood would get mad at you is if you fought in your church clothes, right? Mm-hmm. And they were like, "Don't fight in your church clothes." You're like, "Fuckers are jumping people. You're go- <laughs> you can't say let me change or I'll fight my fucking BVDs." My mom doesn't let me fight my church clothes, dude. People would say that, Back man. Up. People would say, I got my fucking church <laughs> church pants on. If I fucking get changed, I'm going to kill you. All right. No fighting in the church clothes. All right, everybody. I think we all agree to that. <laughs> what about when, I, I mean, maybe this is in Florida, but like people goofing off with a hose and you're like, hey, I'm not allowed to get wet. Yeah. <laughs> my mom said, seriously, dude, don't spray me because my mom said. You're going to have to deal with her. This is not the outfit. Just people with fucking hoses in their front yard squirting people as they go by. That's the low rent as you could possibly get. That's some real some fun. Hey, fuck you. Here's some water. When you're running away from your hose like somebody with a hose, you're like, what am I doing? I'm just going to stop and take it. Get nice and wet. I'll dry off in eight minutes in Florida. Oh. What do you guys think? Is he going to win today? Is he not going to win? <sighs> Yesterday, I was feeling pretty low. Today, I'm feeling like he's going to get something. It's not going to be what he thought it was going to be. But there's no way he's walking out of there empty. <laughs> there's no way. I just can't live in that world. Mostly because I'm afraid to live in that world with Chris Stanley <laughs> getting nothing. I- I'm afraid just the opposite. Chris Stanley with $8 million. <laughs> I just don't think he practiced. <laughs> I'm, you're gonna see, if he gets that money, you're gonna see a, a, a fucking drunk guy in a Batmobile. <laughs> that money is gonna go, I'm kinda happy that he's got this girlfriend who, you know, right. might be able to slow him down a little bit. Cause Chris on his own, no. That fucking high society will have him dealing fucking crack again. <laughs> like the old days. We're his good friends. We don't want bad things to happen to him. He needs to hand over the estate to her and just let her control his money. But, Vito, you're right. Like it does. I guess that's really this week the concerns that started to come up is when people would call in like, "Did you do this? Did you do that?" Mm-mm. And I was like, "No, you gotta do that, Chris. Mm-mm. You gotta get your dip pants." Did you figure out all the hospital bills? Somebody has it. <laughs> I'm asking about photographs. I'm asking about documents and expenses. I just something to pull the heartstrings. Anything. I just picture his Barney Fife fucking lawyer. They got us over a barrel here. What the hell does that mean? They blew up your mom. How are you over the barrel? <laughs> yeah. You didn't blow up anybody's mom. <laughs> that fucking guy should feel weird. Not you. He also kept saying, uh, I know we had that stuff at one point. 
Oh, God. God. It's really making me nervous. Like, not even we don't have it or I don't know if we have it. Just I know at one point we had that stuff. <laughs> this is so upsetting. This is your big brother's fucking pal, too. You're, you're totally responsible for this. No, what? Uh, Kylie Jenner uh, pick. Uh, it's just called Kylie Jenner in a pile of wood. <laughs> you're more, you're Kylie Jenner, right, Vito? Yeah, I like Kylie much better than Kendall. And uh, Kendall is the actual attractive one. She's a model. She's yeah. the model. She's the one that's supposed to be posing in a bikini. The, mm-hmm. Right. The other one just Kylie. does it for no reason. Yeah, Instagram. she's she's Instagram. She has some, like, makeup line. Yeah, she has a lipstick I'm, line. I'm wearing it right now. Right. <laughs> Jen, Jen gifted it to me. <laughs> it's, a great, it's a great makeup. By the way, Jen, look at this. Uh, Vin just stopped by out front when I was having a smoke and gave me these oh. uh, sweet um, sweet sunglasses. Where are they from? Uh, I didn't catch the name because I wasn't there when he showed up. Oh, I thought it was up. the same thing that you bought the... No, no, no. Up. Okay. Different. All right. Well, anyway, these pictures will show up on page six of me wearing them. <laughs> and the company will like that because they don't like you to say yeah. that these are gifted to you. They just like certain celebrities, very celebrated fucking yes. style setters to be wearing this. <laughs> but he said most of what they do is in the ladies' line. And uh, he was going to bring back some stuff for... You and Gail. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Is it Australian? Does it start with a Q? I don't know, man. I think I know. I'm not sure, though. We'll mention it. We'll mention when I say to Jen one day, where'd you get those fucking rocking <laughs> glasses? <laughs> but he acts like he's, uh, like, what he really wants to do is deal through Jen. Yeah, he he's seemed like, to be very interested in Jen. I was like, he was like, do you I have like Jen's glasses. contact information? Oh, like, I don't. I like glasses, too, sir. <laughs> <laughs> he said um, that you had more of a contact face. Um, that's so mean. <laughs> do they have contact sunglasses? Oh, no, but that's crazy. Shark Tank, who wants to get on bar and have some shade over your money, sharks? <laughs> Directly onto your pupil. Aren't, don't you hate it with your sunglasses falling down or... <laughs> Falling into the toilet when you lean over. Well, no more thanks to shade tax. That's right, shade tax. I always like when something like this. How much of your money you put into it? One point seven million dollars. And what are your sales? Thirty two hundred. Most of them to family members. Oh my god. Yeah, that's always heartbreaking. Like when we watch that um what was the kid the toy box? Toy box. And you just hear like these families who just like sunk all their money and you're just like, well, that is a garbage toy. It's like, be- not going to take off. Because the child came up with it. You see this fucking right. thing and you're like, no kid. Like, I had ideas all the time. You know what my parents would say? Shh. <laughs> Shh. <laughs> oh, that reminds me. Today's program, we got a brand new sponsor. Today's show comes to you from Underwater Shavers. <laughs> you no longer have to shave outside of the water. You can shave in the pool, in the ocean, a river, or a lake. Underwater shavers. Enjoy your summer. I'm going to get that. A lot of people getting themselves the summer this year, too, man. Uh Uh-huh. Getting some fucking summer. Take a piece of summer. Yeah. Slice up a nice, big fucking slice of summer. (laughs) Summer's almost gone. It's mid-summer right now. I know. that. It's always a weird feeling when... Like August starts approaching, and you're like, "What?" Have well, I here's done the anything? deal: uh, if you you're a maniac, if you think it's still summer after Labor Day, yeah, it's going to be hot, but you can't take a fucking vacation. Yeah, you if can't have a summer. Yeah, you can't have a summer. That's an early autumn, whether you like it or not. Fucking college footballs have you started. So please get on your summer right now. We're going to be up in Montreal. I suggest you take a fucking road trip to see this comedy one on one show. It's going to be so so fantastic. I'm going to go so far as to call it surreal. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. We had a great we had a great time last year, but this year it's just this is going to be a big show. So it's Comedy 101 at the Just for Laughs Comedy Festival in Montreal, Friday, July 28th at 11 p.m. at the Mainline Theater, uh, part of the Just for Laughs Comedy Festival. Go to the ibang.com to find out how to get tickets to Comedy 101. Um and we'll be linking that out, but I'm going to tell you right now, I'm predicting well, Mr. James Norton, the, the greatest of all time. Now, Don Wicky Wicklin said that he 
it wants to take sole responsibility for, from getting Jim from his gig to our gig. And he said he's going to have a car waiting, and he's requested a backstage pass so no one slows Mr. Norton down. Very cool. Yeah, he told me that today. Uh, unasked. Unasked. Yeah. He was just, and I was like, you act like he's Jim Morrison mm-hmm. and not Jim Norton. <laughs> I don't see him. It's called Get Him to the Main Line. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I actually like that title. I'll try to get that for Shark Tank. <laughs> Ba-ba-bum. Mike, New York, what's up? Hey, guys, listen, you better explain to him whether it's $5 million or 5000 He doesn't get the money right away. It takes a couple of months. Because I have a vision of him going to every drug dealer on Steinway Street tonight saying, yeah, I'll get you next week. Yeah, well, he's going to leave some of his debt in play. He's already said that, no matter what. He's gonna... Yeah, he says <laughs> he's not paying he it said off. at the most, even if he gets eight million, he said he's only going to pay off half. By the, the way, rest in play. That's literally, it's not a crime, but it's definitely criminal behavior. That's what criminals do. Yes, they don't <laughs> fucking TCB. They don't take care of business. <laughs> I mean, you cannot expect Chris to TCB. You got to fucking take good care <laughs> of my business every day while I'm away. <laughs> Let me tell you something, Vito, and I know you look up to Chris and you see him as an older sister, but <laughs> he's not here today. I'm just going to tell you, that's a fucking pile of sorrow that you're doing a show with. All right. <laughs> yeah, he uh, he's, he's, he tries his best, but. I don't know if he is drinking on this behind is the pathetic. scenes. His best is pathetic. That's the fucking sad thing. I'll make a good point, and then he'll throw in can, some non sequitur. You, you hear a guy calling today, listening to the show. He's like, I want to get sober like Ronnie B. I got this fucking Chris two feet away from me, and he's eating pills and drunk every day. How come I can't fucking make an impact on him? Sometimes it's hard to reach the people you're closest to. I'm not close to him at all. <laughs> I just found out his name the other day. His last name, Stanley. <laughs> I thought that was his middle name. Yeah. <laughs> he's heir to the Stanley Steam or fortune. He has, he's like, you ever see those actors that they just drop their last name and then keep their first and last name? Yeah. I'm just like, that's fucking stupid. Go in or fucking go home, you pricks. Anything big happen on Big Brother? Any spoiler alerts? Uh,. The veto ceremony happened. Without telling me a thing, right? Just give me a prediction of where we are now. Spoiler alert, spoiler alert, spoiler alert. Who do you believe is going home this week? Dominique. Not fucking Jesse. No, uh, Paul has got a hard on for her. Dude. Isn't that a good thing when you get a hard on for a woman? Well, like a bad hard on. Like there is no such that? thing. What is that? Like, like a rapey yeah, hard like on? Like a rapey hard on. That's okay, horrible. Okay, that is bad. It's a hard ladies and, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen of the jury, he came into our bedroom with a bad hard on. <laughs> <laughs> not, not a good intentioned hard on like you would expect. Not a loving hard on. <laughs> like, a, like a gentleman would have for his lovely lady. This is a bad hard on. <laughs> <laughs> like a foreigner would have <laughs> a bad hard on. Um, if if you are correct in this, Vito, this is I'm very concerned about my boy Paul what? because it, it's that's overplaying. That's really this week could have been a simple week. Plus, don't forget that there's going to be a um, battle back scenario. He, he and doesn't you, know that though. Yeah, but you could have predicted that that would happen. Yeah, and right. then and you would have a situation where the couple was both you know already voted off and well, you could only get now you stand a chance of getting him to battle back and the couple's reunited in the house. Vito will understand when I say this. It's really good to have a fucking pissy shitty partner way Cody was because when that you're out of the house, it's almost like people are like done with that. Right. And they don't go after the second one. It happens all the fucking time. This is why I wish I was hosting the show and not Ms. <laughs> Julie Chen. Yes, I, know she's so she, good I know she looks fantastic, but I could pli- probably wear like a one shoulder fucking outfit. <laughs> well, that's, Hi, that's Julie. What, that's what happened with Paul last year when he was best friends with Victor and then Victor got out of the house and everybody just forgot about Paul. And what happened when Victor came back? He started acting like Louis J. Gomez and everybody <laughs> fell in love with him. Um, Paul made TMZ yesterday for the blackface thing. Good. 
He didn't go. Some people are getting to make TMZ. It's good to hear. He he didn't get all the way through with it though. He uh, spoiler alert, spoiler alert. Too late. Why would you even tell us? <laughs> he, oh, because it's on TMZ. He just wore uh, black diamonds as like a snake would. That's not bad. That's not. I never would have considered that blackface. I'd say black eyes. Yeah. I mean, it's still weird, but it's not. Uh, it is weird. I'm not <laughs> racially that. offensive. For a change. <laughs> Plus, what's his background? Uh, I don't know. Some, I think he's some kind of Middle Eastern. Yeah, I think Albanian, not or Albanian or um, Armenian. So that's a big difference between the two. Pick Get one. To the I'm gonna pick <laughs> Armenian. <laughs> Armenian. Armenian. Yeah, I think he's an Armenian too. Well, what's his last name? Normally, your name has to rhyme with Armenian to be Armenian. It's Paul Abrahamian. Yeah. Okay, he's, he's Armenian. Armenian. He's Armenian. <laughs> he's Armenian. <laughs> You know, we haven't dished at all this week. No, we haven't. Do you have some dish? I do have some dish. Uh, all right, then you know what? Let's dish. Let's dish. Put on your headphones, Jen's got the news. Let's dish. The gossip they're saying on the radio. So this R. Kelly thing oh, is pretty crazy. Right oh, now. This That's, R. Kelly. I was reading that up on the iBank today. I uh, I think this R. Kelly's trouble. <laughs> he is trouble. <laughs> yeah. Um so there's three families that are looking like for their their daughters, mm-hmm. and they just found out that they're, he's basically, they're basically being shacked up by R. Kelly in his house in Atlanta. They said it's cult-like. Yes, it's cult-like. They can't go to the bathroom what? without asking for permission. Mm-hmm. One girl, you know, like... Where this is going? <laughs> the way I, hold on, did I think my school was a cult? That just happened to me. <laughs> um, yeah, they spoke to BuzzFeed. And, um, yeah, they just said that one of them tried to, like, hit on a guy or, or they were flirting with a guy mm-hmm. in front of him. And he thought that she was hitting on him. So then he, like, took her outside and, like, smacked her across the face. Like, that's how intense it is. With now, sex cults. yeah, this is <laughs> now here's the thing. It's very. If your child is an adult, mm-hmm. it's fucked up. But you can't act like I'm the parent of this person. Right. You know? Um, like if my dad came in here now and said, I'm the parent of this person, I'm going to <laughs> stop talking. Like, I don't know where you go ahead and step in and say, this this sex cult not only is a bad idea, but it is, in fact, illegal. Like, I guess you would have to say that they're being held against their will. Yes. Yeah. As opposed to. Now, if he's just convinced them, you know what I mean? You know, we have all kinds of cults like that around this right. fucking country. There's a lot of places, you know, until they turn into a death cult like I was in. The only one who decided, mm-mm, not going to. Death cult? <laughs> yeah. And then you I, backed out last minute. Well, I, everyone else looked like they were in pain. <laughs> and I just, yeah, I think I quit the death cult. <laughs> he, is, he is denying yeah. This whole story, but like one of the, the alleged captives have spoken out. Her name's uh, Jocelyn, and she was 21, yeah. and uh, she met him when she was 17, but didn't start like actually mm-hmm. having a sure. relationship yeah. until 18. <laughs> right, good so for her. <laughs> this is what she said. Mm, keeping it quiet. Yeah. <laughs> so nice. she won't speak. <laughs> I'm 21. I'll be I'm about to be 22 in about five days, and I just mainly want to say that I am in a happy place with my life, oh, and Jesus. I'm not being <laughs> brainwashed or anything like that. You Who's know, holding the camera? To a point where <laughs> it definitely has got out of hand. So <laughs> it has gotten I just out want of hand. Everybody to know my parents and and everybody in the world that I am totally fine. I'm okay. happy where I'm at. That's all I need to hear, honey. <laughs> I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna go back. <laughs> not being held against your will or doing anything that you do not want to do some of the oh, stuff ne- no not at all I've never been feeling hostage or anything like that oh, i never been even. feeling hostage <laughs> or not that. Family's coming forward and saying this and they've <laughs> asked for a welfare check and everything like that why why do you think now 
Um, I, I personally, I don't though. really know what's <laughs> going on with that, so I, I wouldn't want to answer that at this moment. The last time I spoke to my parents may have been about a good on and off about this six, five months. I haven't really spoken to them because of everything they've been causing problems in my life about saying I've been hostage and being held against my will and stuff like that. Because it has, I'm very heartbroken of what's going on with this situation because it's, it's getting to a point where it's getting too much out of hand. You know, me having we to deal it. with this. You said we heard it earlier. All right, now. I haven't even spoke to my parents in <laughs> six, five months. <laughs> First of all, uh, there's nothing you can do here. I mean, I, there's plenty of people like I've known that got in relationships with one person, right? And I'm like, well, they've completely changed. And they, they act like they're afraid of that person, but they're staying. What are you supposed to fucking do? <laughs> you know, she's not being hold, held against her wheel. <laughs> not um, against my wheel. <laughs> my parents think I am. <laughs> but I haven't spoke to them to six, five months. So that's all I'm seeing about that. So. <laughs> that clickety clack of the fingernails. Yeah. So I'm just gonna make my point right here. Okay. First of all, I adore her. I love her. And she's. I definitely understand why he took her hostage. Yeah, she's so cute. And I'm not. Oh yeah, she's unbelievable. And I would put her if I was running that cult. She'd move up to the lieutenant for this fucking great job. You're gonna be in charge of the other fucking hostages. I haven't been hostages. I just been bumped up to lieutenant <laughs> of said cult. <laughs> <laughs> well, honey, is he peeing on you? Because I know that's oh, yes, of course. <laughs> yes, there is going to be some peas, but that's consensual, and my parents got to know that, okay? Because I'm not being held against my wheel. I'm not being peed on against my wheel. So that's all I got to say about that. <laughs> well, God bless her. I like to get a cult started. I'm sure I could get fucking beat on the I think you'd be heartbeat. great at it. Yeah. I think you would be fucking great at it. Yeah. I'm in. A lot of, <laughs> like, sometimes it'd be like how everything's going to be great, and other times I would come in. Well, you're the worst fucking cult I've ever heard of. <laughs> Look around. You know what I mean? I treat it like a football coach, like a fucking teenage, uh, for a team team. <laughs> Look at each other, because you're a disgrace to this community. <laughs> Guess what? You better go hope that your parents haven't left because you're not taking the game bus home. <laughs> That's for winners. <laughs> um, I got an email the other day uh, that a coach, one of the coaches of the Baltimore Ravens, big fan of the show. Really? Yeah, he came out to see me at the stand. I guess I had bolted in my... A limousine. <laughs> um, and uh, by the way, you know who's driving my limousine now? Who? And I can't even believe it myself, Mr. T. I don't what? know whether. Yeah, he's doing a fucking bang up job. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. T. That's classy. Um, but yeah, they listen, and he brought another That's... coach with him and stuff. So, looks like we're going to be getting behind the Ravens this year. <laughs> That's my team. That's all it takes, on. really. Yeah, I love the Ravens now. <laughs> And their quarterback's the Delco guy. Oh, really? See, mm. that's enough there. Plus, we got yeah. people in Merlin. <laughs> yeah, we do. We got some Merlin folk. All right, what else are we dishing on? So Aaron Carter, he oh, just... Yeah. <laughs> I haven't thought about him in a long time. I think about him every day. Do you? Mm -hmm. Is he in a cult? <laughs> He's not in a cult, but he got arrested for um, DUI charges. And this was like after he talked about Shia LaBeouf's uh, DUI charges. Saying, like, you would never see me get a DUI charge. And then, ironically, <laughs> the, he did. The same week, this is what he said about Shia LaBeouf. He's looking pretty gone. Uh, real quick on Shia LaBeouf, do you have any advice on people? Oh, I mean, DUI. <laughs> Don't listen to her. Uh, Shia LaBeouf, man. I can't tell if he's out of his gourd or a genius. Or he's a genius, yeah. Do you think he's <laughs> genius? Planet at all? I think genius. it might be genius. He is. Yeah. He's genius. He still books roles, like great roles. Yeah, after... She was just talking about that. Yeah. Like, he still works. And he's like the only actor <laughs> that like his <laughs> girlfriend. But with the gate. This is like his second or third or something yeah. like that. Which <laughs> helps his reputation. But you're not yeah, planning on doing that, that, right? Yeah. Like, uh -huh. you don't agree with that celebrityism, like getting drunk and then getting a DUI and helping your. <laughs> Absolutely, I do not agree with that. Okay. I, you, you won't catch me getting. Any DUIs? Yeah. I don't have any DUIs. 
<laughs> just caught and literally, you. he just got a DUI, <laughs> mm-hmm. like, that Saturday. <laughs> well, you, you said, ironically, he was arrested. I think, predictably, he was arrested. <laughs> But he's a genius. He still books roles, man. Yeah. That's fucking I mean, brilliant. he's crazy or a genius. Yeah. He's probably a genius because he books roles. <laughs> Obviously, you can be crazy and talented. <laughs> of course. Preferably. So, uh, Beyonce, finally, you know, she oh, had her twins. Baby. But these are her, are her twins' names. Sir Carter Jr., <laughs> and Ruby Carter. And this what? is the picture she put up of Jesus her Christ. and the twins. So cute. She looks like Where a is she at, though? With a, <laughs> <That's> like, <laughs> fucking have a chair like that. Some kind of ethereal world where she has thrown <laughs> flowers. She's a fucking New Jersey garden queen. <laughs> <laughs> where, do you, where do you get that from? I was very excited when these photos yeah, were these released. <laughs> Well, who do you like? Groovy Carter best or me? <laughs> Rumi? <laughs> or who's the other one? Sir. Sir. Carter, yeah. All right. sir? Yeah. sir. I'm sorry, sir. Put that down. Put that down, sir. Excuse me, sir. <laughs> Can he be junior if his dad's name's not sir? Wait. Yeah. He's junior? Is, yeah, he's Sir Carter Jr. His dad's name is Sean Carter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you no. can't just put a junior on whatever you want. <laughs> but you can just throw in the name Junior. I mean, like, you have to do something to be called Sir. The queen has to be involved. They fucking want to, She got, got Queen Bay just does it on her own. <laughs> this fucking family is nuts. No wonder he can't fucking come home at night. <laughs> <laughs> he can't come home at night. He's got to go out and get him fucking threesomes with a... Quite frankly, an angry heart on, as it's been <laughs> talked about in the press. Very angry. <laughs> Poor dumb bae. Look at her. She looks fantastic. She does look good. This is I fantastic. Love I love that. I am done with people loving her. I can't help it. She's hard not to love. <laughs> she doesn't even have a singable tune. Yes, she does. She has two singable tunes. <laughs> All the single ladies. And ba 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 Wait, Matt's the, Matt's the silver, the fox. silver fox. Yeah, Jen loves him. Love him. Yeah. Um, apparently, some of the ladies in the house do as well. Yeah, I was listening to the Big Brothers podcast with uh, mm-hmm. Vito and the Eight Million Dollar Man, <laughs> and Vito won a Christmas. You think she should be disqualified, right? Yeah, I don't think it's fair that she could leave the house for like a day at a time. I understand she's injured, but the whole point is that you're stuck and isolated in this home. You're not dealing with doctors, and you're dealing with outside people. It shouldn't be allowed. Maybe she should have got like a free pass to come back and compete like in, next season. Another season? That's yeah, what they, they did do on that Ru- all the time. They did that on RuPaul. I don't think it's a, a free queen. pass. I think it's just a pass. Right. Well, you don't have to pay for it, do you? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not a bus pass. <laughs> I mean, you're exempt from audition process. So that's who you would pick in the oh. house? Oh, yes. He's How about you, go? Who are you picking? Kevin. <laughs> Fucking such daddy issues. <laughs> you know, who do you pick? Elena. Which one's uh, she's the uh, radio. big knocker. Oh, radio oh yeah. Radio. She's pretty foxy. I like her. I'm into her. Yeah, um, she's your type for sure. <laughs> yeah, she's loud. She's brash. I like her. What about you, Mr. B? I'm straight Jess. Jess? Jess? Yeah. I like the way she treats her man. <laughs> <laughs> I already know she's into psychos. So that's fucking perfect for me. That edit on Sunday when she was on the uh, the wall and they had the Cody the Cody ghost come up and say, "Whenever I'm going towards the finish line, I just yeah. imagine somebody in my family's dying on the other side." That never made sense Wait, to me. What? He imagines someone in his family's dying, so he just to keep pushing through oh to the dying person. Not- I mean, honestly. We're going to read about him in the fucking paper one day. Oh he's, my he's probably in like a hotel sequester right now, just waiting for Battle Back to start. And I can't imagine what he's just like doing, like punching the walls. <laughs> Would this be bad? Christmas is out, off the show this year. I'll let her get a free pass. Mm-hmm. But we bring in, uh, I think it's Sir Duke. Um, <laughs> and the Duchess. <laughs> wait, Sir Duke is a Stevie Wonder song. <laughs> by a guy who actually writes music. Sir Carter Jr.? Aaron Carter Jr. Oh my God. <laughs> Why have they never done that? 
baby brother. You take a bunch of kids and put them in the big brother house with no adult supervision. <laughs> We're fucking bitching CBS this today. Holy shit. Vito, get a hold of my manager and find out his name. And then <laughs> let me know. All right, let's do another dish. So uh, John Boyega, he uh, got dating advice from Robert Downey Jr. I don't even know who this guy is. He's from Star Wars. Oh, yeah, yeah. He was Star Wars, and he was in that really great... Um, Attack the Block. Yeah, Attack the Block. He's in the new Catherine Bigelow <laughs> movie coming out, Detroit. So, yeah, he uh, asked Robert Downey Jr. basically, like, the update on these L.A. women. And, like, you know, he wants he wants to know who to not mess with and who to mess with. And oh. Robert Downey Jr. seems to have great advice, I guess, on women because he, he's been around so long. Yes, but he was a fucking train wreck. <laughs> then he married a makeup artist and he got sober. <laughs> so just on that, marry a makeup artist and stop doing drugs. And who was the other guy in this? Orlando Bloom. I guess oh, stay Orlando. away from the Bloom. <laughs> That fucker doesn't know what he's doing. He's going on a surfboard with his dick out. <laughs> surfboard. <laughs> oh my god, that was. Why did he have his dick out again? Because Just there for was fun? pops around, and he wanted to fucking get into the. Uh, by the way, I hear some people. Remember how they were calling him paps and stuff? Yeah. Some people are now calling him Rozzies. So keep an eye on. Oh, that. that's pretty cool. Well, because they were saying paps, but it was like pap smear, like a Brit. It's a British term because they would say like paparazzi, right? But we don't say paparazzi anyway, so <laughs> it was right. always confusing. For and the me. whole f- phrase is Italian. Paparazzi right. is Italian, means like little, little flies or yeah. little insects or little Mosquito, flying insects, yeah. whatever they. You know, the Italians are never quite sure what they're fucking talking about. <laughs> Yeah, they just right. make shit up. I wish that guy would have called me. I gave him great fucking advice. <laughs> what, you, what have you told a uh, young Star Wars? I uh, said, fucking hang yourself with a belt. Your movies stink and your careers. Oh, my God. I go, they could fucking rebook your role in a second. You can put Aaron Carter in there. The same amount of people would show up. That's what I'd booked. say. Yeah. Aaron Carter gets booked now. <laughs> booked at the fucking police house. <laughs> Um, people are asking if I've got any Chris updates. I do not. No, I, I was, do not. I was kind of expecting to hear like maybe a little something by one, but maybe it's going to take longer than expected. Longer, good or bad? Uh, I don't know. Cause there's, I think he did say there's like one or two cases ahead of him. So it doesn't even necessarily mean that his is going long. There could be one yeah. ahead of him that's going long. Or the judge could be yelling at him for having an old fucking hunk of cake in his <laughs> fucking suit that he found and just starts eating it. Wedding cake? <laughs> Three-year-old wedding yeah, cake? from Zito's. <laughs> mm, we got a nice wedding okay. cake. That suit is covered in sand. <laughs> <laughs> Mistrial, Your Honor. <laughs> because of the uh, sandiness of this man. <laughs> ba, ba, da, 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 da. No, that's stuck in my fucking head. All right, give me another dish. So, yesterday we talked about that new show on Netflix, Gypsy, that Maureen mm-hmm. called in. Oh, yeah, that's really, really yeah. good. Well, it turns out Naomi and her uh, co star, he plays like the husband in this TV show. Billy Crudup? Yes. They are possibly dating. They've been seen. That's a handsome couple. Ca- yeah, he's really good looking. Well, <laughs> he's also, this would be like his 12th star to get. I know. And I know that I remember their one star uh, was pregnant and he left her while she was pregnant for another fucking star. Yeah, who was the pregnant one? And then he left her for Claire Danes, I it think. It was the one from that weed show, Smoking yeah. Weed. Oh. Yeah, she's gorgeous. And Three left, names. Yeah. I forget. <laughs> oh, uh, Mike. Uh, Mark David Chapman. Okay. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> so it was dating Mark David Chapman. Right. He gets locked up. I guess he shot somebody. Right. Gets uh, pregnant. Yeah. <laughs> I can't remember her name. Parker? Was it one of the Parkers? Uh, no, not Sarah Mary Jessica Louise Parker. Parker. Mary, Mary Louise. Louise Parker. Yeah. yeah, that's it. Oh, she's so hot. Love not, her. Yeah, so she gets pregnant. He walks out and starts fucking banging the shit out of Homeland. <laughs> <laughs> So he goes from weeds to homeland to gypsy? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, this there's guy no, can't stop. There's no stopping this fucker. I imagine he's a great first date. Star Wars should ask him for advice. Yeah. <laughs> 
That's a guy that I thought was going to be a much bigger star. Credit? Yeah. Yeah. I would agree because he definitely, he's a great actor. He's got the leading man face. He's like aging into it too where you, you start to pick up. That's, so what happens to him? I don't know. I'm Why not. Why isn't he asking fucking Robert Downey Jr. for his dating advice? <laughs> I don't know. Why is this other fucking Star Wars fucking idiot? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe Watchmen ruined it for him? I thought Watchmen was a. Uh... I mean, I know it didn't do well, but wasn't it critically loved? It got like weird mixed reviews because there was it was like really violent and rapey, and there was a big blue dick in it, a giant blue <laughs> dick, and it was his. <laughs> Vito, what you're saying right now leaves us fucking open to being sued. <laughs> I don't think that man's penis is blue. I think that was CGI. I do not think we were looking at his blue dick in that movie. I can't believe you would say that. I do not That's... leave this firm this vulnerable. You're going to say that Weeds, Homeland, and Gypsy all were with the blue dick? No. Come on. Well, those special effects weren't that good back then. It had to be a dick. <laughs> is this hearsay? Yes, that is hearsay. All right, let's go have another dish. Another dish? Mm -hmm. Well, Mindy Kaling from uh, the Mindy Project. Mm -hmm. well, very She's, familiar with her. <laughs> I love her. She's expecting her first baby. Oh, mm. congrats. I love baby Was it getting it off a bus? <laughs> <laughs> Mindy Kaling, um, I don't know a single person who watches that show, but it stayed on all these years, right? Yeah, it has it has uh, done well for itself, yeah. and she like kind of maintains that big status. But I don't watch mm -hmm. it, I don't and watch I it, like. Her. I know it has like a really big following too. <laughs> but who, if none of us know anyone who watches it, how does it have a big following? Where India? <laughs> the Midwest. <laughs> oh, young and restless. I watched the first few seasons because it was on that Fox comedy lineup I really enjoy. You mm -hmm. watch everything at least I like, once. I like, uh, I like the Fox comedy lineup, like where you get your new girl, your Mindy Project, the grinder used to be on there. Your new girl. Can I just say, <laughs> new girl. Nine -Nine. I, I was a big grinder fan. All the rest of them can fucking suck ass pipe, though. <laughs> but grinder was amazing. And they fucking, they kicked it out. And that's the night that I yelled this out. I'm done with you, network TV. <laughs> You've ruined me. Um, they, they, I'm going to do my own little dish here. <laughs> Gronk, and this story is up on the on the iBank. Gronk ha, is emceeing a comedy show with Lenny Clark and a bunch of other Boston comics. But this is to <laughs> let you know how funny Gronk is. He's holding two footballs as if they're gigantic... <laughs> no. Okay, that is funny. So yeah. those are like two pointy titties. I'm sure that's something that <laughs> would make a lot of the murderers on the <laughs> fucking New England Patriots laugh. But it is at best a fifth grade joke. <laughs> Oh my god, he's dressed like um old school Vito. <laughs> Remember those like Vito's Rafer days? Like yes, he's pretty yes. much wearing that outfit. Yeah, minus the glasses. fucking football tits. And he acts like old school Vito too, with putting fucking football tits up. And his we loved football tits back then. Then oh you still would laugh at that. No, I saw you both. giggle when we pulled the picture up. It's more about those funky glasses. <laughs> That's how you know he's a fun guy. You know what I mean? Like yeah. he's not too serious. Mm -mm. He's fun. <laughs> he's gronky. Meet him on the cruise. <laughs> They're going crazy. Old Gronkonko, my they yeah. call him. Uh, sometimes, uh, your chick might get grinded on by Gronk. <laughs> Just like if it was a fucking Great Dane. <laughs> Ari Shafir coming up in just a little bit. Uh, and then you, uh, will have his unmasked. And then, uh, a special double negative now streaming on Netflix. That's two, count them, two, count them, two, two. specials. Only done done once before in history, Claude Navito, and that was Dave Chappelle. Thank you. Good company. Guess what? I almost said Dane Cook, and I'm like, instead of saying it, because that sounds crazy, I'm just going to throw it back to Vito. <laughs> Dane Cook did this, ladies and gentlemen. Are you okay? You just said Chappelle. Um. I never even bring this up, but I worked in a place that Dane Cook worked. It was a diner. Mm -hmm. And I was the manager. Uh, Dane was, I'm not even going to say a chef, but what do you call it when you're... Line like, cook? Like a short order cook, yeah. right? And he was 
we're we're like way behind on everything, right? <laughs> and Dane was flirting with one of the waitresses. Mm-hmm. What's her name? Amanda. Amanda. <laughs> and I go like this: Amanda, get back to your station. Oh. Dane, cook. <laughs> and that was the. <laughs> now they say that improv is the finest kind of comedy. That was an improv bit, ladies and gentlemen. Could it be improved? Absolutely. Just add an E. Yeah, but only through writing. <laughs> What's going on back there with Disco Down, Vito? I see Disco Down in the hizzle. What's the story, Hi, Dan? Dan? What's up? What do you want us to do? Cut a new thing for Father's Day? <laughs> Over, yeah, man. It's 2018 Q3, guys. All right, what about Labor Day, comedians in labor? Yeah. Off we Pregn- go. There's only... How many pregnant comedians can we find? What if we do pro labor? Maybe oh, pro. Families, okay, yeah. I think we could find a couple. I, mean, I can't think of one offhand because <laughs> they're all very lazy. Right. Well, what are you up to, buddy? Uh, I was just coming down to say hi. I'm just, uh, you know. Well, I got to take a break right now. You want to sit in with us in the next yeah. break? All right, just go down. I'd like to sit in with us. Uh, we're going to take a break now. I, I refuse to read anything though, during that break. <laughs> Is this the only thing we're doing today? Thank you. It's only... Oh, I'm glad to do this because it's Tito's Vodka. By the way, I was watching a uh, Terrence Malick movie last night. Mm -hmm. And, you know, some people love Terrence Malick. Some people don't like Terrence Malick in this area where he's going now. But it was all Austin, right? So Austin looked fantastic in this movie. And then that reminded me of our good friend, Tito Beveridge, the guy who started Tito's. Yeah. And I'm like, and all kinds of stars are, Patty Smith is in this, you go, go on and on. Um, Red Hot Chili Peppers, you want me to keep going? Yeah, I'll do it. Sure. <laughs> I'll, I'll do it for an hour. Uh, but I'm like, please let Tito Beveridge walk into this, you know? I want to hear the Tito story told through Terrence Malick's eyes. And I waited, I waited, I fell asleep. I think he probably was. I'm sure he and did. I, was it called, uh, Vito, was it called Song After Song or Song Song, Song Song Blue? What's the name of this Terrace Malick film? I don't know. You have a fucking computer in front of you. <laughs> I never think that you're going to know, but I think you have fingers in a screen. <laughs> anyway, Tito Beveridge, this would be a great movie. I, I plan on making it. Now, watch this. It's, it's like a tracking shot, right? Mm-hmm. A tracking shot. Beautiful. And... There's just a bunch of people when it comes in, and they're all screaming, Tito, you know, your idea won't work. How can nobody wants Baca to come out of? <laughs> and then the tracking shot just keeps going. And so, Tito, when you see his face, you know that he knows. He sees the future. <laughs> Zoom! Tracking shot goes all the way back. We're in space. <laughs> back down again. Okay. It's 15 years later. Number one. Vodka in the world. Tito's vodka. Okay? And the reason why, and people are like, and Tito's friends are like, you're number one, but how you gonna launch it? You got a simple paper. paper. <laughs> Tractor shot goes back again. <laughs> back down to earth. <laughs> you just see all the awards that Tito's won around him. He's sitting on Bay's flowery throne, right? Mm-hmm. He's got a Tito's <laughs> bottle in one hand. He's got a glass. Boom. He's pouring it. And as the bubbles come up, right? Each bubble is a memory from his life. Wow. Okay? You see Tito running up his credit cards. You see Tito putting vodka in a suitcase and going from town to town to town. (laughs) Whips back into space. Okay. And when it comes back down, the planet has changed. A thousand years has gone by. (laughs) And this is a planet of apes. (laughs) Now, hold on. Just as you're freaked out, one of the apes just pours some vodka for this house and goes and puts it up their mouth and goes like this. Tito's! <laughs> and then a slow, it's almost like a helicopter move back, right? And you just hear these words being spoken. Tito's handmade vodka is distilled six times from 100% corn and is naturally gluten-free. Visit us at titosvodka.com for recipes, songs, and more. 40% alcohol by volume, handcrafted to be savored responsibly. I don't know why uh, 
they keep writing me emails about this thing, and then Dan asked me about that contract I was supposed to uh, sign. Donna asked me today. Yeah. From Montreal, I thought we already sent it out. I thought so, too. And then I think me and... Is it in the mail? Mm, I don't think so. Uh, but you know what? Don just sent something to me and Jen, so we'll we'll print that out for you. Uh, I've already taken care of it. Okay. It's done. I don't know how it... Uh, but where is it? Is it back there? That's the fucking thing. They want it. I'm not sure. Old Stan Man, I think, was the one who had it. Mm. You know where he is. Oh, boy. The details on this fucking Montreal thing have been just nightmarish. I know. It's been a quite a puzzle. You want some good uh, Montreal news, though? Yeah. Dan Perlman's been officially invited. To Yay! Montreal. Man, he deserved it. Because that the short film that he made is really, really funny. You know what I say, though? Why make a short film when you can make a long film like Price? Steven Spielberg has done? <laughs> Maybe you've heard of the long film he's made. It's called E.T. It made the entire world cry. Oh, like a baby. Dan, how are you doing, buddy? I'm I'm well. You're not going to Montreal this year. No, I'm not. I'm staying in America. You run what channel here? I run Laugh USA. Uh, it's a tight ship. How many employees do you have underneath you? Zero. Okay. So you're a one man gang? Well I I run the soft software mm -hmm. and I run the you know, I, so I you're screen in charge content. Of, you're in charge of robots at least. Yes, um but are, we we all are in you our know own what? way. When I started radio humans used to do that job. Mm, like human jobs. beings. So not humans do pulling <laughs> like records and CDs and yes. tapes. Oh yeah. Yes. Record we deal. Record. Record Somebody boy, would pull get that. it. Yeah, record boy was one of the guys who were not, another one of them. CD boy uh -huh. worked there later, and then this shocked people. Tape girl, mm -hmm. tape girl. Now, who was the, what was the hierarchy? Oh, well, record boy was at the top of the really? change. I mean, you know, this is a came. man. It's it's you know. Oh my God, so, misogyny! It had That's... more to do with the technology. Hey, uh, Stevie Island, have you guys become friends again? What happened? Tell everybody all the people on Stevie Island. Who was shipwrecked on Stevie Island? Well, I guess we were, you know, considering that I, I used to sit right by the studio down here. Yes, it was great. Mm -hmm. We had uh, some fun times, but, you know, the Stevie Island got, we got moved upstairs to become Stevie Island. So you could say we were all, all four of us shipwrecked there. Um, it's um, two Stevie, Stevies, uh, one uh, who works in the comedy department and one who works specifically on the Jay Thomas show and uh, Christina. Now... You and Christina were the best of friends. Yeah. No. And Christina used to stop down and do this show. And she used to do stuff for uh, the station as well, too. Mm -hmm. Right, right. I think they still do that sometimes. Well, she never promotes it anymore. Because. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen her in so here's long. Here's what happened. Because me and Dan are so tight, I guess I got seen as. Uh, you chose it, Stevie. Persona non grata <laughs> on the other Stevie line. Who Who are the two teams now? Is it one Stevie? It's gold versus, well, it's, you know, it's shirts and skins. Okay. Yeah. And I'm obviously the skin. Right. And when you're the skin, it's kind of hard to, you know. And you're aligned with one of the Stevies? Right. Yeah. And I, then I, another I, Stevie and Christina are together? I suppose, but it's kind of, I suppose you could say the four of us are our, each our own island now. But I heard this. I heard the reason why you're out. Do you know why they're mad at you? Why is that? I'll just say this, rat, stooly. <laughs> well, I must take umbrage with that. I heard that you were running a fucking gossip column over there straight to HR. Is that true? Well, I ran a gossip column on this show. Right, I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. And But you know what? You're bringing up shirts and skins. It's always been t-shirts against the suits, dude, and we don't fucking talk to the suits. Yeah. Right. Um, but the suits... They have, you know, they have all the power, so you got to kind of cozy up. We don't need a fucking spy in our mess, dude, and I heard you were a spy. I'm only a spy when, um, you know, sometimes spies are good. When? Uh, there's a, a lot of American spies. You're a fucking tattletale. No, 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 no. Yeah. No, no. No wonder the Stevies don't trust you. You're talking out of school. 
I think that every great company needs a great. Uh, this is what they were saying. They're all up there talking. Mm -hmm. They fucking look over the hip. He's running a fucking teletype underneath his <laughs> desk. I was actually wearing a wire. Uh, Dude, do you really? You go, you write about conversations that you I have? do. It's honestly, it's kind of like a compulsion. Uh huh. And I just like to be loyal to my company uh, at all costs. And mm -hmm. friendships are important, but. It's all about the business. Wow. Look, right. at, look at Dan without his glasses. He's like a different person. I know. He's like a different person when he's talking about how, the way he moved up and got his own station. <laughs> is by fucking naming names. He was bringing up who communists. He believes his, he believed there was a communist fucking party starting here. I There wasn't... Now, like, you don't feel bad that that's cost you your friends in Stevie Island? Yeah. You know, that's certainly uh, been a sacrifice. But Stevie Island, I feel, you know... The bond is perhaps beyond friendship to something greater. You sit back to back with people who won't look at you or talk to you. <laughs> That's fucking terrible. But sometimes, leave. you know, your, your, your family, that. you know, sometimes your family doesn't talk to you. Yeah, no. And you're still that. family. Oh, my family That's talks not to true because none of us are rats. <laughs> you know what I mean? You never ratted on your, you know. No. Uh, no one? Mm -mm. <laughs> no. <laughs> Why don't you just apologize now? I'm not going to apologize because it doesn't just it doesn't feel like I, I feel like I, I should be the one accepting apologies because the I all I did was serve my company. Mm. I was just following. Well, I wasn't following orders because I kind of decided to, you know, all these decisions on my own, but. No one even asked for this information. You just went in with it. Yeah. Now we know the truth. Somebody was stealing computer paper. That's what it went down to. It was, um, there was a lot of paper missing. And when I had to print my daily Sudoku and I couldn't, I snapped. <laughs> I feel like you owe an apology to the island nation of Stevie. No, that's, you might think that, but I think that that would be a, Throwing away everything I've achieved. And you're okay every day walking in there knowing that people are not going to talk to you. Yes. And some days perhaps you, you want to be alone because then you know that, you know, only, if only people who are completely right all the time are alone. Do you feel like you're, uh, do you have the trust of anyone at Sirius XM? Do you, is there anyone that you feel particularly close to? Gail, I thought I, mean, I thought, we, I thought we were friends. Sure, it's open. I'm just curious. Because you found out that you were over here with a fucking a fucking microphone taped to your boot. Here's what you got to understand. I think isn't it unit core God country, right? Yes. Unit yes. means unit first. Us first. Your fucking boy. Unit you singular uh -huh. one. Riddle me that. So you're going, you rat, fucking <laughs> you, core God country. You rat. Yeah, me. All right, come. Look, I'm going to help you do a thing. We're going to do an audio fucking apology. Okay. 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 Christina. Christina. Just say that. Christina. It's me, the fucking rat. It's me, the 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 rat. I am so sorry that. And to the Stevies as well. And to the Stevies. To really the whole. I'm sorry I'm a rat. I don't have faith in my own abilities. So I thought that by bringing information, both true and exaggerated, it would make me look better in my boss's eyes. My boss's eyes are <laughs> true and I will tell the truth. Did they come to you, or did you go to the the bosses for this? Well, I don't know uh, what the information is. Well, so all I heard. You is think they sniffed him out as somebody? Uh, who believe so. I, I got an eye for this right now. If I I'm going to come clean. Yeah. <laughs> I was wearing the wire. I tore off the wire. I duct taped the wire so nobody could tell it was a wire, and then I threw it into Jack's office. Oh, Jack was the the person you went to. R well, you know, he's the top top dog. Oh. Put them all on your side. <laughs> that changes everything. He's my boss, too, so i got to say something good. Right, I'm glad you squeal. 
Well, how did it get back? Well, the whole thing about having a squealer is to n- never find out who the squealer is. Yeah. Right. You squealed too Vita. loud. Yeah. <laughs> I, so I guess my biggest misstep here was anyone finding out. Yes. Mm-hmm. Because a, a rat, unbeknownst to his colleagues, is not a rat. Well, yeah. But there was a old fucking thing in the in my neighborhood and my family that we would always adhere to, and it's don't get caught. It's getting caught this is where the fucking trouble starts, not fucking doing something. Don't get caught. If you get caught, though, what happens? You're on your fucking own. You're not down on my show, sitting here bringing up Jack's name, bringing up Christina's name, and everybody else. You keep it fucking quiet. Now... I mean, do you guys do you guys not trust me anymore? I've never fucking trusted you. I saw you coming a mile away. <laughs> I don't trust anyone. I think uh, you know this company. I, I think it's a, it's you know it deserves you know some respect, and um, I think that I uh, you know by by just squealing as you say, you know, I'm just it's all in service of the truth. His hall monitor status right. around here. Did you like a hall monitor when you were a kid? I was never a hall monitor. In fact, I was envious, one could say. And They would have fucking smacked him around in the hall. <laughs> he might have been able to write talkers' names when the fucking teacher had to go take a dump when you were in third grade. Remember that little creep fucking Oh, my God, is that what kid? they were doing? Yeah, they were fucking dropping fucking mud. Oh, that makes sense. And I remember everyone said that, put my fucking name on that fucking, fucking dump. Fucking kill your racist. <laughs> Um, why can't people just talk freely while they go to the bathroom? I still don't really understand. The lesson paused. Why can't we just have a minute to have right. a conversation? What, would all hell break loose? Would we forget Latin because you're fucking down there? Someone would be wearing a wire and it would get out. Stop it with that. Stop acting like this is... A, I've been asked to come to you. By the other, you notice nobody around here trusts you anymore, right? It's... That's... It's fine though. It's it's Mac Boy, Long Island. Yo, what's up, guys? Hey, Ronnie, th- thanks for taking the time to shake my hand and meet my wife as well. You know what? That was Saturday little... night. <clears throat> We're over there Saturday night. Rich really uh, gave it to those guys, man. That was uh, crazy. He's like a, like a classic Shakespearean. Character. Like you're like a little Iago in Oh in yeah, I ear. love Iago. Oh shit, all this is over my head. Damn it. <laughs> Whispering like... nonsense, dripping poison into the ear. That's him. Or like in Goodfellas, you're a fucking rat and your whole family's rats. Same thing. <laughs> it's totally yeah. Well, sometimes the rat is the protagonist. What are you uh, talking about? Here's yeah. Matt Boston. Matt. Hey, hey, guys! Listen, I used to work in radio and oh, sales. Right. Yeah. This guy, this guy is a piece of shit. We would have shit in his desk. We would have hung him out <laughs> the walls, and we would have poked out his eyes. I, I, fucking rat. I think. You got uh, a good point, Matt. I think I would tell on you, Matt. <laughs> eight, eight four four rock cut. Eight four four rock cut. Can you support the office rat? Here's what's. This is the most heartbreaking thing to me. Mm-hmm. I know you and Christina were friends, That's and right. that matters zero to you. It matters a lot, but uh, the true the loyal, loyalty to a, an entity mm-hmm. is is more important than loyalty to people. Seriously, That's That's really really, that, that sounds like a so good upsetting. German. That's a good German. This hey, is how six hey. million Jews were killed. Hang on. Hmm. I think I could uh, maybe in that situation be some sort of a whistleblower, you know. No. Would you have blown the whistle too? Uh, the, the... So <laughs> yes. exactly. You're doing bad things. Uh, yeah, there's a problem. <laughs> I saw Chris <laughs> leave the airport. <laughs> and then by the end of the day, <laughs> he's like, "These assholes don't watch the elevators." <laughs> So look, I got pictures too on my phone. She didn't know I had it. Oh, and she took some of your candy. When you were when you weren't here, she went in and out of that candy you have in a big bowl. Is that what it sounds like? Mm-hmm. You fucking sound exactly like I that. I thought that was you talking. Like okay. a fucking rat. Look at you. 
It was up to me. They come in here some, one fucking Monday morning, and they'd find you hanging with your own penis in your mouth, <laughs> is, and, and money stuffed behind that penis. <laughs> That's mm, how the mob tells, sends a message. That's a message Money from the mob. penis. You eat money penis. Something like that. After they <laughs> cut my penis off, do they at least like put my pants back on? That I never checked on. I don't know a lot. Uh, you know, you're Italian. Is that how they do it? Um, no, I mean, like, we will for presentation, but we'll have the lower. We will. He now <laughs> says this way. Scary. Well, we as Italian people. We will put the pants back on for presentation matters, but yeah. we'll have a underlay. Can I tell you something? You know who else was involved in Hitler? Mussolini and his little fucking meatball makers. <laughs> <laughs> Cody? <laughs> no one meatballs can, for lunch. I'm, you know, I'm quite frankly a little shocked that no one can call in and defend. The rat? The office rat? No. Jason, do you defend the office, office rat? Yeah, go ahead. If uh, yeah, if he uh, you know, he's, he's telling on everybody. Yeah, isn't he a thief for taking um, company paper for his personal Sudoku? Uh, they kind of mm. they kind of make that available to us. I mean, it's a lovely. They write it into the budget. Yeah, it's a lovely <laughs> place to work. I'll go help you sell some Sudoku. I'm not paper. buying a book. <laughs> I know what level I'm at, and I, I'm not going to be able to, to ascend to You're four stars, You're fucking right, though, aren't you? Christina, her fucking <laughs> habits. That's the name of your book. Tim, since a boogie. Hey, I, I I'm not about snitching, but who who signs your paychecks, Dan? Uh, the well, the Tim. the company. So, the, the people you told, right? So yeah. You 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 you're defending your paper. I, mm, I get indeed, that. indeed. So friends, this, friends this... come and go, but jobs come and go. I guess too, but <laughs> yeah, they do win. <laughs> <laughs> Something else that I'll fucking comes and goes is a karma chameleon, <laughs> and that's what this fucking guy is. You forgot a about karma that, karma chameleon. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just saying, you gotta, you gotta protect your paper, Dan. Thank do you. What you do. Thank you. I mean, you know <laughs> who else fucking protected his paper? Judas. Judas, Judas hey. said the Romans are running things. Let me turn in Christ thy Lord. In Jesus Christ Superstar, I always identified more with Jesus than Judas, you know? Is that right? Right. Because you act like Judas instead of Jesus. Instead of, you would have went into the boss's office, turned the other cheek the way Jesus was. Yeah. Jesus didn't give up anybody. He was on the fucking cross. You know what you, you got him out of him? His usual. Zero. Nothing. Zilch. Ping, pound, boom. You should have seen the holes in his hands. <laughs> but he didn't fuck it. He did the right thing. Mm -hmm. He took it like a man. Well, um, do you think, uh, do you think ultimately, you know, it was the right call? Nick, Indiana. <laughs> Nick. You can't trust an office rat. Hey! Uh, for one, Whatever they were doing wasn't affecting you directly? No. Nothing. And then, yeah. Then you're fucked. Hey. End of story. Can't I, I, trust look. the office rat. Can't trust them. See? That's just the truth. I just, I think that's that. That's just the truth. I, I think that's not the truth because you can trust the office rat. You just, you just have to behave. Oh, oh my, my God. God. Yeah. He's using nah. that power. Behave. You know, no. You're going to lose all your friends. Yeah. Well, he, has, uh, good, but he doesn't good. care. I don't need him. He's fucking uh, ratatouille over here, cooking his soup. <laughs> the only that. friend yeah, I so need yeah. is, about Dan. is Justice. David Justice? <laughs> From the old Atlanta Braves? Uh, Yankees, too. Oh, well, I was done with him by that point. I was done after he started smacking his beautiful wife around. Oh, really? Who was he married to that he just give him the back of his hand? Mm -hmm. uh, Eric in Wisconsin. Maybe I made that up. I'll say allegedly now, or I made it up. Eric in Wisconsin. To the corporate brown shirt. Stitches get stitches. Well, uh, He's got violence stuff. is uh, against yeah. uh, the code of conduct. Uh, he does have stitches when his appendix went out. Yeah. That has nothing to do with his snitches. No. <laughs> he told him one of the fucking anesthesiologists, though. <laughs> Yeah, they didn't give me enough uh, anesthesia. Michael, Texas. 
Yeah, I was just wondering, is this guy married? No, I'm not married. Uh, uh, well, lucky for lucky for that, any woman that tries to get with you, because you'll end up uh, worrying about your own affairs, get with anybody you want if you're with somebody else. Mm. That's true. Mm. That's fucking true. How are you going to be a proper mate? He's a selfish shellfish, we used to say. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, you know, the wife's just going to have the wife's just going to have to, you know, abide by my my code. Oh my god! Mm. And you have male roommates, right? I do. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Mona. Good morning, or I should say, good afternoon to you guys. But um, is this the same Dan? Is he? He's the Trump supporter. No, he was the Bernie supporter. He's a, he's a Bernie okay. bro. Okay. Well, then you know what? He he belongs exactly where he is. There's a damn rat, and the Russians need him, and Hillary needs him. What? I don't even like Hillary. I'm not sure what's, what's side. Uh, it's Don Jr. Look, all I know is we probably both agree he's wrong, and he's a rat. He's a rat. You just got to okay. step on him and that? drop a bowling ball on his ass. Instead, I just fed him on my cheese. ass. Mm-hmm. I gave him some cheese and I said, "Here, enjoy this yeah. cheese." I prefer that to the yeah. bowling ball thing. And I also gave him some triscuits because I didn't figure he had his own crackers at home. So but I wasn't going to give him the nicest <laughs> ones. I just want to say to all these critics, um, yeah. I, critiques, critiques. Um, <laughs> I think that you have to consider consider where I'm standing, and you know, think about perhaps what you would do. If uh, the, the the truth was out there, what? dude, you know what? I know so many people that are X-Files? fucking stealing from this company. You know what they get out of me? Zip, zero, nada. I fucking keep my fucking head down, my nose clean. That's how I get by. All right. He just does his. I time. saw a murder take place here. A murder. Well, we're gonna have to talk about that. No, I'm not giving you any info. Talking to you is like yelling in the boss's fucking office. <laughs> um, a Scott, Scott in Detroit. Hey guys, uh, I think what he doesn't realize is he's being used by the company. Mm-hmm. And then when this yes. information is no mm-hmm. longer valid, he's going to be out of a job yeah. and on his own and he won't realize why that is. I was talking to two of the bosses and they go like this, shh, Dan's nearby. Wait, they was, don't even trust me. Dan is a guy that fucking just hangs around nearby a lot of conversations. So. He's like, he's just like, you'll be talking business and you just turn yeah. around. He's just like, what's up? What's up? <laughs> Dog? How did you try to fucking run on Don? You did? I I did. I told on, uh, I told on Don uh, about... Everything, just Don, just every, every everything. Don keeps a bottle under his desk, and he fucking drinks out of it. Oh my god! A baby bottle. Oh, oh. oh. I should not you have just, said hey, that. Guess who I'm reporting? I'm fucking texting oh, right shit. now. Hey, hey, hey! I, I thought I thought we had an understanding that if I came clean, no, you can rat on rats. That doesn't count. <laughs> yeah, you can rat on a rat. <laughs> Because then you're just even. Yeah. Then you're just fighting fucking rat with rat. <laughs> rat uh, battles, it's called. <laughs> rap battles. Oh. That's a whole nother thing. Gotcha. I don't think that I did anything wrong, and that's final. Why don't you go buy Christine a nice gift and say, I'm sorry I for being a rat. I don't, yeah. I, I don't have the... Um... What, rats don't carry money? <laughs> oh, this fucking... This company that you love so much doesn't give you enough money to buy a nice fucking gift for a young lady. Enough for you to sell someone down the river, though. In the meantime, I saw that time we had banana bread in here. Um, Christina said, I'll take one for me and fucking one for Dan. I go down there. Dan's just over it with his big fucking rat teeth. <laughs> just tearing and nibbling at it. Oh <laughs> That's how he eats. Listen to the way he eats. Listen, Jen. Oh. <laughs> Rat you, boy. Hey, rat boy just made himself sick by doing that. <laughs> He's like, oh, I'm disgusted. All right, Chris went in at 11 o'clock. It's one thirty, and I ain't heard fucking shit nor shinola from him. Nope. And I kind of thought somewhere between 1 and one thirty, we would get word. Um, Ray in Georgia, Ray. Uh, he's a marked man. He's a marked man now. Yeah, he is. You fuck up. You fuck up. You're gonna throw your ass out on your on the street. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. Who's they? The man. The, the man. The, boss. the bosses. Yeah. The man. The, the man. Bosses. What if they're lady people bosses? Are wa- people are watching you now. People are watching. Are you watching me? You're being fucking watched, dude. You know that you are. You're, That's like what you're happens. living in a zoo. That's what happens when you get in the rat race. That's true. I think the song from the 80s says it best. Someone's always watching you. No, I never heard that song, but it sounds fucking great. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, peace. You know, I never thought of it as ratting. I never even thought about rats at all. You're branded, dude. Branded as a rat. I'll tell you a little fucking story. All but one man died down in Bitter Creek. And they say he ran away. Brand it. Scorn is the one who ran. What do you do when you're branded and you know you're a man? From the TV show, <laughs> Brand it. I thought, that, I thought you were going to tell me the answer. <laughs> well, then you're just going to have to go around and fight people when they fucking say that you're a coward. I'm honestly afraid to leave the studio. You should be. Mm-hmm. Now I have to walk around in fear. Yes, exactly, because you've been exposed. Uh, Ari Shafir, buddy of ours, he's got a two-part special, double negative streaming on Netflix. Ari Shafir, double negative on Netflix. Uh, Coming up in just a couple of moments, we're going to um, play the Unmasked with him from Skankfest. Yes. Uh, and there's a crossover audience between us and the skanks. I call them the skankingtons. Yeah. Where they listen to both shows. And then there's also another crossover with us. And the bonfire called them the Bonningtons. That's adorable. Yes. Either way. And then I was like, who knows? Maybe there's even like another little centerpiece in that Venn diagram. What would be there? That would be the um, skanking Bonningtons. The skanking, well, nobody who listens to the skanks will listen to the bonfire. Really? I they thought... hate each other. Okay. So that's probably very rare. The bonfire fans, they hate Dave Smith and they hate Louis J. Gomez. Right. Hate their guts. The skanks fans, they hate Dan Soder like there's no tomorrow. Dan Soder's going to be with us in Montreal. And by the way, Dan's a, st- a stand-up guy. You're not going to get anything out of him. <laughs> I mean, he's straight. Uh, Also, Jim Norton's going to be there. Go to the iBang to get tickets to come to Comedy 101. We're going to announce some uh, other judges next week, and it's going to be very, very exciting. And that's Friday, July 28th, 11 p.m. at the Mainline Theater. It's Comedy 101, part of the Just for Laughs Comedy Festival Montreal. Go to theibang.com for a chance. Tickets. All right, so, uh, Vito, we need to... Um, wrap this up. We're going to go straight into this. So we will not hear from Chris Stanley until tomorrow. But I need you to keep your fucking powder dry in case I have to send you down there and bail him out. Okay. Because he might be in contempt and shit. <laughs> More than that. He may have physically assaulted somebody. God. Uh, yeah. I got, some, I got the dirt. What dirt? Nothing. You know. You can't fucking throw out accusations like that, Dan. We're waiting on real information. I thought for sure you know. I could know. You got this fucking. You got this place wired. Yeah, it does. I do. We're probably being recorded right now. I, end I up hope hearing not. A tape of this back. <laughs> I'd like to be able to speak into this microphone and just think I'm not being recorded. Thank you. I ain't recording shit. Don't worry. <laughs> oh, I know that for a fact. You know, if there's one thing I'm sure of, it's that. I doubt we've even been on the air today. <laughs> Is our is our show on tonight? Is tonight a Big Brother night? No, no. tomorrow. Tomorrow's the uh, veto ceremony. Thursday's live eviction, and Friday's battle back. Jesus! So three nights in a row. Yeah, three nights but in a row. Thursday, I'm going out to Guns and Roses. You didn't think about that, did you? Wow, wow, wow! You going to that, Dan? No, no. Come oh. get a ticket. It's a hot ticket. Yeah. Looks like nothing for the rats, huh? Well. uh... You know, it's that's all in a hard day's work. Uh, it doesn't make sense what you just said. <laughs> uh, Ari Shafir, uh, Unmasked is next. Please check out his two-part special. 
double negative. That's streaming now on Netflix. Uh, and then coming up after this break uh, will be the Unmasked with Ari Shafir. Moments before we did this Unmasked, he had thrown urine on another human being. He had peed in a glass and then <laughs> threw urine on them. And then we sat down and had a heart-to-heart a talk. Very, very mature heart-to-heart talk. That's is strange. All right. Uh, next, Unmasked with Ari Shafir, and this is Bennington. Live from the Creek in the Cave in Long Island City, Queens, New York, as part of the Skankfest Comedy Festival, this is Unmasked with special guest Ari Shafir. <laughs> And now, here's the host of Unmasked, Ron Bennington. All right, buddies, uh, this is Unmasked live at Skankfest with the one and only Ari Shafir. Thank you. Thank you. I've never sat down and used a mic stand. I feel like an acoustic guitar player. <laughs> I got to tell you, uh, you're already a legend at Skankfest this weekend. <laughs> I don't know how you unmasked a man who has done the things in public that you've done. I don't know, man. It looked like the right thing to do. And I just like it. <laughs> popped into my head, and I was like, you may as well just do it. <laughs> so in terms of comedy, right? Yeah. Why is someone naked on stage doing a roast, then urinating into a glass, and then throwing that glass of urine on a person with open wounds? (laughs) (laughs) Is that improv or a written bit? Yeah, yeah, I was sure said afterwards, like, you can't write this stuff, you guys. Yeah, that was a problem. I couldn't tell what to do. I was thinking of throwing it into the crowd. Uh, maybe drinking. Oh, now you're it. offended. Yeah. I could tell the front people in the front row were thinking it too. So when I threw it in Zach, people yeah. were like, okay, there's relief. All right, cool. But, you know, that, uh, that kind of stuff, and you do this kind of thing every once in a while, but it's very different from your material. Yeah, it's written. <laughs> yes. yeah. Your written material is stuff, yeah. very thoughtful <laughs> and interesting. And then, I, as a matter of fact, the last time I was here at Creek in the Cave, it was a birthday party for Big J. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you were there for that. <laughs> do, do you remember what you gave him? Yeah, I got him a birthday party. I got him a Ben Sevenfold's new CD. <laughs> a pre-release. I don't even think it took it home. Uh, Big J opened uh, a box, an airlocked box. Airtight. That, yeah, airtight. Uh, of your feces that probably was in there for at least 24 hours, I'm guessing. It was, let me think, at, at most 24 hours. I might yeah. have shit in it that morning. Yeah. The, the hard part was finding a box that was airtight. Yeah. So I could walk around. I was also praying that I got mugged on the subway and someone stole it from me. <laughs> There are people in Queens that that's their 9-11. Um, <laughs> and people were scrambling exactly the same way <laughs> as 9-11. What? The best that it was there for an hour and 45 minutes, everyone's just sitting around it. And I'm like, <laughs> I should know the name of the company that makes that airtight box. It works. <laughs> but I shit right into it and then close it. So when it, when it opened up, the smell, I mean, it was from the garage and then into the bar people were leaving. It was unbelievable. It was like when Scooby-Doo yells into a bottle and then sits, hits the fucking cork on it and then when he opens it up it comes out full force that was great and the room scrambled like somebody just dropped water on grease pan yeah. no, you just saw people <laughs> flying into walls again how do I do an unmasked with a person who's well I mean you're kind of open I'm pretty this. open yeah, yeah in terms of most people that I know I'm pretty like whatever but I will say this and this has been a crazy wild year for you an interesting year but uh, with your background, the way you grew up, you're Orthodox Jew. Yeah. Do you know anyone else that's gone from comedy who's... There's one, like, agent or manager yeah. who was in my yeshiva in Israel. He still keeps Shabbos. Yeah. No, I don't know anyone. Yeah. 
I mean, it's really different. Yeah. It's a different move. Yeah. Now, were you a, were you aware when you were a kid that you liked comedy? That were you? Yeah, I used to like watch it and stuff, but we didn't have cable, so I watched like um, some Carson stuff uh-huh. when that would come on. I watched uh, Live from the Laugh Factory on Saturday nights on on Fox, I think. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> that was cool. I saw some people on there, like the Amazing Jonathan. I thought it was real funny. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I just like I was like, this is all fucking great. Yeah, you know? but it didn't dawn on you that that could be a path for you. No way, no way. Yeah. My friend Ami Butler used to say like, you should try to do comedy, and then I never did until college. I did it once. Yeah, yeah. But you, when you grew up that way with your religion, you were into it for a long time, right? Into what the religion? Yeah. Oh, for sure. So after high school, we went. It's a general tract as you go to Israel, study in a seminary. You know what a yeshiva is? No. Okay, seminary. Uh, it's just like studying all day, all night, Torah. So you get up at, I don't know, 7. You study for about 45 minutes, then have breakfast. No, no, excuse me, then prayers, then have breakfast. Take a 30-minute break, then study till 1. Go get lunch, play basketball for an hour, study till like 5 or 6 p.m., pray. More study till about 10, get some dinner. <laughs> Study till about midnight, hit the bed, and then, you know, just repeat that every day. Yeah, that's pretty much the same way Louis C.K. grew up, I think, when you think about it. <laughs> but, but that kind of, does that kind of work for you, the fact that you have that kind of intensive background that, you know, that kind of drive? Because yeah, I mean, I don't know. It helped. I don't, I don't know. I was never a good student before that. And then when I was there, there was no grades, so it was for the first time I could be like, if I just sit here, then I'm doing well. And all the rabbis would be like, hey, good job. And it was like, oh, wow, look at me succeeding. <laughs> doing it. Yeah, I'm doing it. Yeah, you didn't, didn't, there were no tests. They were just like, yeah, you learned. You did it. You did it. Congrats. But one thing I, I noticed, because I see people in the park, the Orthodox Jews will get together and they'll kind of argue religion. They'll go over pieces mm-hmm. of the religion, which is unlike a lot of other religions. It's not open to, hey, it's let's It's real vibrant. This. Judaism is yeah. real vibrant in, in terms of like, you have to like analyze it. And that stuff helped me. Yeah. The, the logical progression of the Talmud, where it's like, you'll have something like, um, I'm trying to think. Okay. If, if I, if, if, if I kill you, your wife, you're not married, are you? It, no. Okay. No, I'll just, I'll just say no. Yeah. But your wife, uh, I would have to pay her for the loss of income to the household. Right. So if you're a doctor, I have to pay her like a hundred bucks a week. And if you're a garbage man, I have to pay her like 10 bucks a week. And then everybody argues like, why are you putting like a value on human life? Yeah. And then they end up arguing like, and they come to the place like, no, it's just expected like lifestyle that you have to like replicate. That kind of logic based arguments. That's all the Talmud is. And, and, and the, so and I use that in my comedy. Right. For sure. And the fact that you want, you kind of want to be a contrarian, you want to kind of go over this stuff yeah. and go, how is this fair? Which is really comedy. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I like using their shit against them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like taking all the stuff I know. And then like, so I had like a bit once about like, uh, if someone's coming in Judaism, if someone's, the rule is if someone's coming to kill you, you're allowed to defend yourself up to the point of killing them in order to defend yourself and your money. So then I applied that to abortion, where uh, it costs a lot of money to raise a child, so they're coming to steal from you. So the Torah would say, kill that thing in order to protect your money. And they're like, that's not how, we don't mean that. And I'm like, well, I don't know, it's not that clear. I know too much, that's what my dad says, like, you know too, you're wrong what you're saying, it's, it's evil. So when you when you left that, there was a moment for you. There was a kind of this moment. Yeah, yeah, it was hard. I mean, that's my whole upbringing, you know. And uh, I got to the place place where I I thought about my belief system, and it just wasn't in me, you know. Like I don't I don't know how like I don't know. They talk about a leap of faith that you have to have, but you have to have a reason to leap. So that means you have to already have faith in order to. To go for it. Remember Indiana Jones when he had to walk on that invisible bridge? Yeah. He had to have a reason to think he would be there. Otherwise, his dad researched it. Otherwise, there's no reason to fucking take that step. So that leap of faith, it just doesn't make sense to me logically, where it's like you have to have already been told this is it and then go for it. So I looked inside and it was just like after years and years of doing it, I was like, I don't think I believe in this. Not like actively. It was just like it's just not in me. And I, I struggled with it for a while. I was like... But what would God say if I went up there and stopped doing all this stuff? 
I think he'd be okay with it. I think he'd be like, yeah, no, I mean, God, I didn't believe in you. And he'd be like, oh, well, yeah, then it's not your fault. Right. Yeah, you didn't believe. If you believed and didn't do it, that's that's a problem. But So was there a light bulb moment for yeah. you? Yeah. yeah, so I had, it was in my yeshiva. So my roommate was out of town. He was just with somebody else on Shabbos. You're not allowed to uh, turn on and off lights on the Sabbath because it's a... Uh, Electricity, there's a spark, and that's like building a fire, and fire is one of the seven types of work <sighs> that you're not allowed to do. You also can't dig a ditch, because ditch digger was one thing, so if you're dragging like a chair, like, I don't know, you're fucking up, you're digging a ditch by accident, so, so that's wrong. Uh, you can't write because like a scribe was a type of job. Anyway. What was I saying? Oh, so you can't use electricity. So I had this light over my bed, and I could take a big cup that you use for, like, hand washing and, like, put it on top of the light and then go to sleep, drown it out. But it would still be on. So I can't mark Norman outside. But, uh, <laughs> hey, you hey. can tell when he's, like, extra fake. Yeah. You can tell he gets louder. <laughs> <laughs> That's when you know he doesn't like you. Hey! It's like, mm, all right, Norman. Um... So I tried to put that uh, cup on there. It wouldn't stay. I kept like thinking of like falling off. And I was like, I should just turn the light off. But my window was right by the entrance to the dormitories. And I'm like, someone's going to see me on Friday night with a light go off. It's all, you know, Orthodox Jews in there. So it's like the light wouldn't go off unless somebody fucked up. So I was like, all right, I guess I won't turn it off. And I just suffered through it and whatever, slept with the light on. But, I mean, for like a couple years after that, I kept thinking like, why did I... Why would I want to do it when I knew the commandment was don't do this? Then it hit me like I didn't believe in the person or the, the being telling me not to do it. I compare it, this is ridiculous, but I compare it to like, I believe in my father, you know, that he's a real being and he wouldn't want me to masturbate in front of him. So if he's, so if he's there, I'm not gonna be like, I don't know if you're real and just start jerking <laughs> off. There's no part of me that doesn't believe my father's right there. So I just wouldn't do it. But the light thing on and off, if God was physically there, it's like, obviously you don't do that. I'm like, yeah, I won't, for sure. But that belief wasn't there. So I was like, I should just do it. And I didn't even do it. But it got me thinking. Like, right. And then I was like, I don't think I believe in this. Yeah. And then it was like, well, let's just stop then. Let's not half-ass it. It's either all in or all out. So I went to Taco Bell. <laughs> Now, how did your people react to that, though? Your family and your friends? My friends I told first. My family I had to tell afterwards. My friends I told first. My friend David Mark, he kept trying to talk me into staying. He was like, you believe. And I'm like, I don't, man. He goes, then go fill the Torah on the ground. You know, I'll do that. You have to fast for seven years? That's definitely wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, only eating it. At night, no, that's for sure wrong. But you have to fast for a while if you see a Torah on the ground. And uh, he was like, go throw it on the ground. I'm like, it's so digital. I'm not going to do that. To What if I get caught? Like, <laughs> yeah. I'm in so much trouble. It's a hate crime. I'm not going to do that <laughs> to prove to you that I don't believe in this. Uh, but if you want me to say, fuck God, I'll do that. And he's like, Shh, no, don't say that. <laughs> I was like, all right. <laughs> yeah, they all kept trying to talk me into it. They're like, well, how did, how did the world work then? If, if, you, if there's no God, then how's the world here? I'm like, I don't know. And I was like, how's the telephone work? <laughs> I can't explain that, but it's not God. I just can't explain it. I'm just not that smart. But I, th I think it's kind of interesting, too, man, that it's kind of like coming out, right? I mean, it's oh, almost, for sure. you know, that same thing of keeping this secret yeah. of who you really are. No, for sure it was. I did a, a, we did theme storytelling shows, and one of them was coming out of the closet stories for, for Gay Pride Week. And I was like, I'll tell that one about having to tell my parents, my father, a Holocaust survivor who's Orthodox, Orthodox. And, like, I didn't want to go to Yeshiva University anymore. It was a waste of money and time. To, it's a split curriculum. Up morning, you go till 1 p.m. You just It's three credits for, like, four different classes, three credits total. Talmud, Torah, all that stuff. And I'm like, this is pointless. I'm not doing this anymore. So I should switch to the University of Maryland, like a state school. So I had to tell them, like, I want to switch, and here's why. Man, my dad did not enjoy it. <laughs> he was like, you don't believe in God? I was like, yeah, nah. <laughs> yeah, he was like, even a dog believes in God. <laughs> he was like, you're lower than a dog. Yeah, I was like, all right, well, thanks for making this easy. Uh, yeah, he wasn't happy with it. My mom, 
My mom was more upset that I'd be missing out on the cultural stuff. She sure. wasn't, she wasn't raised Orthodox. Um, she became it for my father. But still, they're both like, what is this? What are you doing? And I just got out. I just got out. I was still a virgin. 21. I think that's when I did it. Nerd. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't think that's a nerd. Um, but you know, that thing that you did, I mean, you think about that chain that you broke that yeah. goes all the way back. I mean, people were running from Cossacks, running from Nazis, you know, keeping the this, pogroms. yeah, this religion alive and it gets to you and yeah. you're like, I'd rather go to Taco Bell. Yeah. That part's a little weird. I don't feel great about that. Just because there is some sort of chain and some sure. sort of link. When I hear stories about Israel, my, 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 my attention perks up a little bit. I, I don't know why. I'm just like linked to it. And I sort of have kind of betrayed that history. But yeah. I, I don't know. It just wasn't in me. So, yeah. I mean, it was a huge altering of my life path after that. Well, that's when you start to think about comedy, I guess, right? Yeah. Yeah, after that. I mean, you talk about... realized, like, the world is my oyster at that point. Like, anything is possible. Yeah, like, you just... You were like Forrest Gump walking out into the street. Yeah. Everything's new yeah. and fresh. I didn't think about comedy after that. It was really yeah. just living as a not yeah. not Orthodox Jewish person now. And, like, all, all that that meant. Getting up... My first girlfriend was non-Jew. Super religious Christian. She wouldn't introduce me to her family because she was embarrassed. And I was like, you're embarrassed about me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, no, that's not how it works. I'm embarrassed about you. Yeah. Um, yeah, all that, me meeting friends, meeting secular friends. We didn't have any non-Jewish friends. The Orthodox Jewish community, it's just tight. It's not that we didn't, like, think you guys had any value, but your value was less than ours. Right. <laughs> but, I mean, even in Brooklyn, there's uh, there, there's the, they have their own kind of security mm -hmm. and their own taxi service. That's the Crown Heights uh, yeah. uh, riots were over. It was when a Jewish ambulance picked up a the, somebody hit a black uh, little girl and a, and, a, and a Jewish little girl, and the Jewish ambulance service picked up the Jewish little girl and left the black girl, and she died. I stand by it. I think it was the right move. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. They hey, don't act like that never happened down <laughs> south either. Yeah. <laughs> um. What was the question? <laughs> well, just this thing now that you're out. It's you're It really was like coming out of the closet, man. Yeah. And then it really was like, okay, my friends almost all abandoned me. I had a couple friends that were like, okay, we're still cool. One of them had actually left his wife for another woman in the Orthodox Jewish community. So he was ostracized. So he sort of got it. Yeah. Um, but most of them are like, we just, what are we going to, even if the people that did stay with me, it's like, what are we going to do? Where are we going to, we can't eat anywhere. The things we want to talk about are not the same. Yeah. You know, it's just like a completely different lifestyle. A little bit of like sports talk overlapped. And then the rest was just like, that's like when your friends have kids. And you're like, we'll still be friends. And then it's like, yeah, but I'm not. Right. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like, yeah. I don't know. All right. Oh, it's so cute what your kid did. Smell my finger. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know? So, yeah, I just drifted apart from all of them and then had a new life. So how did you find yourself in L.A.? How did that finally take place? I moved, I finished college, University of Maryland, uh, graduated, started looking for a job. My friend um, who I went to high school with, and he went to Maryland with me, uh, he had moved with his family to Miami, and he was like, let's go to California. And I was like, no, I don't want to do that. He wanted to be a screenwriter. And I was like, I don't know. And I looked for a job. I couldn't find any good jobs, um, something that where I could put my stamp on it. You know, what you do. Yeah. If you replace you with somebody else, it might get done as well. Probably not, but it, it might get done as well, but like it wouldn't be done the same. You know, when I was a file clerk in a law firm, you could replace me with somebody else. It gets done exactly the same. I just wanted a job where it wouldn't be exactly the same. So I was close on a job with the health net, oh, not the health network, Discovery Channel, working on their website. That would have been like a little interesting. Didn't get it. And he kept bothering me, like, come on, let's go to California. And I was eventually like, fuck, yeah, fuck it, let's do that. I'll find a job out there. I had this dream of being a screenwriter and a comic, and I wouldn't tell anybody. I took some classes on screenwriting so I could tell them that, but I didn't feel like I had a right to tell anybody that I wanted to be a stand-up comedian. I did it that one time in Northern Virginia, and then that was it. So I just kind of kept that part secret, and then we went to L.A. and found a place. 
realized I had money that was going to run out real soon, so I had to like start being real, like living poor. And then I went to open open mic, and then I went to another one, and then I the screenwriting never happened. Never even attempted it. I mean, I wrote like five pages. People would ask me for a while, like, don't you do screenwriting? I was like, yeah. And then after 10 years, I was like, no, I haven't done it. I would love to say I could do it, but yeah. 10 years have passed. I've written five pages and it was 9.8 years ago. So no, I don't do that. Yeah. I could probably punch up some stuff, but that's it. But yeah, I'm a comic and just fell in love with it. It was just great. It was great making no money. It was fucking great, man. I always think that it's like an insane thing to go to L.A. or New York before you work your shit out, like mm -hmm. out in the sticks. To me... It's a mistake. Yeah. It's a mistake. I had too many friends like fail out because it was too disconcerting. I didn't do open mics here, so I don't know how it was here. But L.A., it's like you go up a lot. The crooked Bar, the fucking uh, Kindness of Strangers place. There are all these just shitty open mics. The Novel Cafe, where it's like in the middle, you get drowned out by somebody sh fucking... Making a, a jola, what, what are those things they make in coffee shops? Yeah, cappuccino machines, yeah. yeah. And you have to like kind of wait. There was one place, the Novel Cafe, where they had a, 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 a golden tea golf game. And if no one was playing it, you could, and you weren't doing well, you could hear crickets from the golf game. <laughs> <laughs> it was so like an unintentional heckle, like, god damn it. And you, if you would do okay, you would drown them out, but generally you wouldn't do okay. I don't know what you kept going. You back for more. It was just like you do these places where there was like six people in the room. I mean, this now is amazing. It'd be six people in the room, only comics. Three of them were writing their jokes, not paying attention. One's asleep, and two were kind of half listening. And you're supposed to like get into that environment and go for it. And it's right. like, oh, so many of my friends failed out. And then you can go to the improv or the comedy store and see people that are light years, light years ahead, ahead of you. Like, there's no way to catch. Yeah, well, you can see people. people even now that I think are garbage. Back then, I was like, wow, yeah. you're so good. I remember seeing people pull in when I was waiting in line to open mic at the comedy store. I seeing people pull into the parking lot. I'm like, oh, that's a regular. Right. That's a professional comedian. Yeah, at least the comedy store, they were cool about letting comics sit in the back when it was not sold out shows, which was every show back then. Um, and you could just sit and watch like people that were way better than you. And like, a lot of people had one thing that was like the best that I saw. You know, Paul Mooney had this like power on stage I never saw anybody have. Uh, Freddie Soto was like real natural and, and, and Don Barris would like scream at a crowd in a way that like get them like laughing. He called like old ladies like filthy whores, you know, but in a way that would get them laughing. And it's like, wow. And just like certain people had one thing that was better than anybody else I've ever seen. If you could like take pieces and learn from that, it was just such a great learning ground. And that's why she set it up that way. Like sit here and watch people that are light years better than you. Yeah. And that does chase out, like you said, a certain amount of people. We're like, this is, this is fucking impossible. It's to, impossible. Yeah. There's no, I mean, there's unrealistic. They talk about hitting a baseball and how fast pitchers hit and right. the amount of time it takes you to think if it's a fastball or a curve or anything like that. And then the amount of time, once you decide what it is to then swing, it takes a quarter second to swing around and like it doesn't add up. Like it's impossible to ever hit a, a, a pitch. And yet, some people manage to do it. I don't know right. how, I don't know how, I don't know how you would get by in comedy. I don't understand. Yeah, it's amazing. And it is very similar to, to like hitting a baseball because they can slow time down. They can see that baseball mm -hmm. in a way you and I mm -hmm. can't. And then you can see that in the best comedy. It is like that. Yeah. When I'm on stage and I hear somebody starting to go, I'm like, that guy's going to heckle soon. And right. you're still doing your, your jokes, but you're like, okay, get ready for that. Okay, this person, I can do crowd work on it. That guy shuts the buck up for another second. Yeah. You're just trying to, like compose all that at once and you're almost like apart from yourself you ever see the movie shine yeah where the guy's playing piano but it's all silent when he's really nailing it and you just hear the thud of the keys but not what's playing because he's in the fucking zone that, that's what it feels like when you're doing real well and that also i mean that is like when we're sitting around talking about god earlier and how does that happen there's something that is as mysterious as anything else in creativity just creativity itself that one moment an idea comes in, and you try to ride that idea, but it very rarely feels like you've created it in a logical way. You know, if you have a really great line, yeah, you probably can't fucking think that fast. Most it's of the time. kind of luck. I mean, there's yeah. good joke writers who know how to like finesse it, but it's almost like what put the idea in your head. Yeah. Nietzsche was like, you can't make yourself have a thought because the 
because just telling yourself, all right, I'm going to think about, um, I don't know, the fucking bridge over there. Yeah. But like something told me to think of the bridge in there. It's not, an, it's not, you can't make yourself have the thought. The thought was already there and then you like, you know, mind it. So I, I, I honestly don't know how anyone would write a joke. It just comes to you. Yeah. And it comes in fast and fast. then you have yeah. to decide to even use the correct timing. Yeah. And then you could tweak it or not. Yeah. I dropped a hard end bomb. I was hosting the, uh, the, the open mic at the comedy store on Monday. Mm-hmm. It was like the first time in a long time I had done it and I was there. So I was like, fuck it. Let me, let me see all the fucking open micers and the employees. And I was starting it and I was trying to think of another derogatory term that would fit and I couldn't think of one. And I'm like, all right, we're going with the end. <laughs> and, uh, as I was thinking, I was like, come on, come on, go, no, Kike won't work, Kike won't work. But my mind is, my voice, my face is already like talking words, like the setup. So I'm like, get something, get something. And it was gay pride week, so I'm not going to do the F, you know? Yeah, right. And then I'm like, and I'm like, oh, hey, there's one black person here that might work. <laughs> Let's just go for it. I think he's on my side. Yeah. And I went for it. It was okay. And I was like, hey, crowd, thank you for going with me on that. Yeah, right. <laughs> Yeah. Hopefully no one's videotaping. Yeah, you gotta take a chance sometimes. You gotta just take chance. You just gotta do the, your, the best research you've done and be right. like, I think this will work based on everything I know. Well, well, I, I'm gonna refer to it from now on as sometime you just gotta throw the piss. From this point on. <laughs> that's exactly you what it is. You just gotta throw the piss. You get the thought? I and think like, it's gonna work. Amico set up the situation. It yeah. seemed right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you got, sometimes you gotta throw the piss. Sometimes I was, do, I used to do a bit about, about, uh, how Jews are the original, whatever, the original niggers. And, uh, and some really jovial fat black guy was like on my side the whole time, the whole, you know, I was hosting back then. It was like, this was 10 years ago maybe. And he was cool and he was like, oh no man, it's nigga. You gotta say nigga. I was like, oh, so if I say nigga, it's okay? He goes, oh yeah, totally. I'm like, alright, so these filthy niggas that are dating our white women. <laughs> Uh-huh. These goddamn yeah. niggas are ruining the country, and he just fucking doubled over. Because you're like, we're on the same side. And that's the game that you're that's playing. That's the game. That's the, the tightrope of does this mm-hmm. work. And you see all the time. Sam Tripoli had a thing where he used to hump a lady in the front row of his crowd. I think in Tampa he told me this, where um, somebody from the back, like of the balcony, was like, if you had done that to me, I would have called the cops. He's like, yeah, I wouldn't have done it to you. For 30 minutes, I was looking at who would most likely take it, and I did it to them. Yeah. I'm, I'm smart about this. I know what I'm doing. So I, I want to lock into this. You got a job at the comedy store, yeah, right? Yeah. Which is, like, to me, like some kind of movie script. I mean, they're, you know what I mean? <laughs> they do that thing of, here comes this kid. He's coming to town. Yeah. Is he going to get on stage? No, but he will work there. Yeah, she, she, Mitzi had set it up. It's weird because they call, they say it's similar to the comedy seller. I'm sorry this is all about stand up, but this is like my life kind of, so it's sure. all I really no, think about. This is great. But, um, she's, the comedy sellers got the best comics in New York pretty much. Um, got the poppins like Louis C.K. popping all the time, yeah. stuff like that. The stand probably has a better like lineup day to day, but anyway, they, they used to say before the stand was around, the seller is most like the store. And, um, it is, except the store develops comics as well. So they have a zero-year comic, and she'll be like, hey, that was awful, but I saw something in you. Uh, why don't you work the booth, sell tickets, and then watch comics. Just fucking watch. Yakov Smirnoff used to work as a bartender. She would employ them to be like, hey, l- watch these people grow, and then also be part of this place. Talk with them. Um, and so that's what I did. I started on the phones. I didn't even know the place existed. I was looking for the Laugh Factory because that Live from the Laugh Factory show. Oh, yeah. And I was driving on Sunset. And I was like, oh, here's another one. I'll apply there too. And the Laugh Factory is like, we don't, do, we don't hire comedians. You guys are awful employees. Why do we hire you? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I went back to the other place and the guy was like, just, just bat- bug the guy. He'll hire you eventually. So I called and called and called. And he's like, fucking fine. Can you work Tuesday? Like somebody just quit. And I was like, yeah. He's like, come Tuesday. And then I answered the phones. That's where I started. Giving out directions and, and, uh, and, and telling Mitzi with the lineups if she called or transferring her calls. Ah, oh, man, it, those were such good times. Ralphie pulled me aside once. I was like a year in. He was like in the main room. I was walking through, going to like deliver something. And he was like, how long have you been doing comedy? He's like, a year. He goes, ah, oh, that's when it's just fun. And I was like, what are you talking about? I can't afford to eat today. <laughs> But he's like, you don't get it, man. I get it now. It is just fun. It's just like you try to write a, a joke, and when you get one, you're like, fuck yeah, I did it. I did it. That worked. 
so or a callback or you know you just figure out these things it's just like man it's like degenerates all in school together just trying to figure out this this game and then you see your friends that are good and the ones that are terrible. You try to like make friends with the with the good ones that have potential. And so many of them failed out. So many of them failed out. But you sit there, you talk to comedians on the phone. Eventually I asked her, I'm like, hey, can you watch me and give me some advice? And she's like, oh, okay. And then she was like, you're too hyper. Because I was doing open mics only and I was like trying to like, it's all comedians. So you had to like do something to get them on your side. So open mics have the darkest jokes in the world. It's all about child rape. <laughs> and fucking murder and shit like that. Um, cause you can't do a joke about lollipops. Nobody gives a fuck. You know? Comedian. And you want to be edgy when you're a kid. You want to be like, oh, who is this? The next Lenny Bruce? The next Yeah, Lenny you Kenson? try to reinvent the art form yeah. until you realize just do it really well. Don't reinvent. Yeah. But you, anyway, you try to be different. It's okay. And then I got, I moved to the cover booth and then I could watch during the shows. You have to work from like, I mean, it was an illegal amount of pay. The door shift was 25 bucks, start at 8 o'clock, end at 2.15. Yeah, no breaks. Were you working a day job then? I was. I worked at the health network. They offered me a full-time job, and I said, can I take off if I get a comedy gig? And they go, no, you get two weeks <laughs> of, <laughs> right. of like of leave a, week, a year, and that's it. And I was like, fuck, all right, I can't take this job then. And I was just poor. I made, in three years, I made 11 grand, 13 grand, and then 9 grand. And just try to survive on that. But you manage, you know, McDonald's helped. Sure. But at the same time you're you're seeing comics that are coming in that are making more than that a night. Yeah. You know? You're oh, yeah. around those kind of people. That was frustrating. Especially when your friends start to get past. Yeah. So you you, you, you start doing the, just one night of open mic at the comedy store. It was Sunday night. You did three minutes. And my whole week would revolve around that. So all the open mics I would do the whole week, and I was like, because the comedy store was the only one that had real audience members. Everyone else, we call them real people. Everyone else just had, like, comedians you were performing for. So you perfect a joke, throw it out on Sunday, and then you're done. Now I'm perfecting another joke, throw it out on Sunday, and you're done. And then you see your friends start to get passed as pay records. Now they can go on on Tuesdays and Thursdays and Saturdays and, like, the big show. You know, they're on after, like, legit comics. And it was so frustrating. She, she worked me like longer than, than anybody. It was, uh, I showcased for her 37 times. It was, uh, she, 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 she Gary Shanley, she worked a long time. Mm. And Freddie Soto, she worked a long time. And then it was me. And she just had this thing in her head where she's like, I'm just gonna fuck with this kid. And just, I don't know, I mean, it, it made why, me almost quit a lot. Yeah, why'd you take it, man? It's not like you. It's not like your personality. No, it's not. But what can I do? Scream at her? You can't tell anybody you're talented. They just have to recognize it. You can't say, I'm good. I've seen people do it. It's, it looks so lame. You just have to be good. And then if they see you, fine. If not, also fine. But like, one time she was like, uh, I mean, I killed on a night. Killed. And she was talking to Miles Gerbrani, who was, who got passed, I think my first week that I was there. And this was my, my 18th showcase. And I was like, hey, Mitz, I don't have to drive her home, waiting for her to say your past. And she just wouldn't. She would tell me about it, the other people that were good. She knew what she was doing. <laughs> she was a fucking cunt, man. <laughs> God. She, got, she fired me tons of times. She was like, you're too tall. I was seating people. I was a door guy. So I was like, hey, right here, you're too tall. You're fired. I'm like, what do you mean? She's like, you're blocking people. You're fired. I'm like, can I just crouch down? Okay. <laughs> I'm like, all right. She would be like, there's no table there. I can't see. Move that table away. And I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. And I move the table away. She's like, why is there no table there? <laughs> like, you told me to move it. Put it back. <laughs> and then I see her laughing sometimes. And yeah. she was just fucking with me, man. I don't know. I don't know why. I don't know why it took. You had to. That was the only path in. It was one lady. And the other, it wasn't like here where there's lots of clubs. There was one club. The Laugh Factory only had professionals. Improv only had professionals and some bringer shows. That was the only place where you get to develop as a comedian, would try shit. And so, event, yeah, so that night in Ma, she was like, I was like, hey, Mitz, are you ready to go? She was like, you're great, kiddo. I'm like, really? She goes, yeah. I'm like, wow. She goes, you're almost ready. <laughs> and, and then a year and a half later, I guess, another right. 18 showcases, I guess I was ready. One time she was like, you're a non-paid regular. That means you go up in the belly room. And I was like, you already made me a non-paid regular. She's like, oh, well. Kudos. <laughs> Kudos. Yeah, she was like, you're not getting past any higher. 
man, it was so fucking frustrating. One by one, all my friends would get passed, and I'd see them on the lineups. So it really helped me, like, it helped me, like, uh, accept the the non uh, competitiveness to where it wasn't like it wasn't like. So there was showcase nights on Sunday night. She would come in and she would look at like last five or six employees and then she'd have a showcase list of people that were recommended. And um, I used to think like, why are they getting past not me? And then after, I mean, dozens of them, you get to this place where it's not them or me. It's just me or not me. So then it was like, congratulations, man. You got in. I'm so happy for you. I was able to free myself from that, from that competitive sort of thing. You know, where you're yeah. like... You must have had that in radio. Well, where it was yeah, like, I mean, it, you can always. The thing is, you always find somebody doing better. Mm-hmm. In your case, everybody was doing better, but still, <laughs> it's still it's the yeah. same kind of frustration. Before you say to yourself, "This is what I do," you know what I mean? I don't yeah. do it for any other reason other than I do this. Yeah, it's not for. I try to convince people and make people understand. Like my mom, she, I was working the phones and she was talking to me on the phones once, and um, we had to get there at nine. Nobody called till eleven. Uh, I would come in, I would put the phone on the floor and like sleep next to it. And if anybody rang, I'd pick it up, but like no, no until 11, no, impl- no, what like higher ups were there. So you get like, it was no point. Anyway, my mom called like 10, one o'clock her time. And, um, she like, so what are you doing there? And I was like, I'm trying to get made to pay regular. She goes, and then how much do you get paid? I'm like, well, then the, 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 the spots are 15 bucks. She goes, Oh, Ari, you can't live on $15. I was like, no, yeah, I know that. <laughs> yeah, that's. They just call it paid regular, but it's not like it's not about the money. It's never about the money. People don't understand that. Whenever I have negotiations with like networks and stuff, they just don't understand it. Like we're negotiating on different terms. It's like Palestine and Israel, and people go like, "What? Well, it'll never be peace." I heard an old prime minister say it. It goes, "Here's the problem." America's used to dealing with like, "Okay, if you if you invade, we'll give you a certain amount of land, and then we'll call a peace treaty." But they're operating on God told us to kill you. So there's no like compromise with that. You can't be like, all right, we'll kill some of you. That'll be yeah. God. God's okay. Um, yeah, it's just like the joy of doing it is the thing. And then if you can manage to get paid, fucking all the better. But like, yeah, in my deepest depression, I had like days of just like, I'll just keep doing comedy till the money runs out. And then I'll just, you know, I'll eat one. Yeah right. Yeah, I'll just, I'll just <laughs> finish it off. You know, I'm like this is great. And when I ha- when I have no money to live, I'll just not live. You you could be the second person who tried to dive out of the Hyatt house on top yeah, of the exactly, comedy store. Exactly, exactly. That guy jumped off the fucking Hyatt, <laughs> tried to hit the comedy store, and didn't get close. But it's you like know, wind resistance. It takes you straight down after a while. <laughs> but you know what's really kind of weird is like. The relationship that you had with Mitzi, like if I meet someone now that was with, I don't know, Bill Graham in the 1960s, I'm like, San fuck, Francisco. Yeah. what a fucking interesting life you've had, you know? Yeah. Those things suddenly... She let me in, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, it was, she had a runner who would drive her around, and then one time the runner wasn't there, and I was like, I can drive you if you want, and then she was like, okay, and she just kind of let me in. It was just interesting to hear her stories. I would see comics lie to her. Like we, I'd be in the comedy store van driving her home, and she'd roll down the window, and like one by one they come up and like say their piece, and then as we start driving, she goes, "He was lying," and I was like, "You must deal with that a lot, huh? Comedians especially." She goes, "Yeah, of course." I'm like, do you punish them? I goes, no, it's who they are. They're liars. Yeah. She was like, "You just know that they are capable of it, so you don't trust them as much." She would say crazy shit too. One time I had to drive her, and it was a Saturday night. And uh, I had to convince her to come in on Sunday once, and she she, was, she started getting real sick. She wouldn't come in. The showcase list with like, the same people would come every Sunday for like six months waiting for her to come in. I was like, Mitzi, just come in. She goes, I don't feel like it. I'm like, just come in. Ruin some people's dreams. It'll make you feel better. <laughs> it's like, you're right. <laughs> I would sit behind her, and she would like have this this list of like this of all the comedians showcasing, and she would cross them out when she was like, no. And I would sit behind her, like stand behind her, and like look over her shoulder. She crossed somebody's name out in 12 seconds once. <laughs> yeah, I was like, how can you tell in 12 seconds? I get it now, though. She absolutely can. Like this guy's completely—he's not a professional. Yeah. He doesn't know what he's doing. He's too young. But um, do you think she had that good of an eye? I mean, she's seen she... enough comedy. Yeah. And and every time she told me, she, she told me to stop doing open mics. I was like, where the fuck else am I supposed to perform? I get up here three minutes a week. And she was like, stop yelling at me. <laughs> we had a weird relationship, man. It really was. But then I was like, you know what? She was right about not being hyper. I was hyping myself up. I was like, oh, you got to hype the crowd up, Mitzi. She goes, you're only hyping yourself up. Nobody cares. 
Right, Joe. <laughs> have you seen this uh, I'm Dying Up Here that's supposed I to I have, and I'm too scared of it. Yeah. Whenever there's like stuff that, that Judd Apatow movie about comedy, too, it was like, it's just going to make me mad. I know they're going to do it a little wrong. Like, you know Anya Marina? You ever meet her? She, her her uh, father is a jazz musician. She said he hated Whiplash because of that movie, which I loved. And she said her father was like, there's no jazz competitions. <laughs> <laughs> that's not that doesn't matter but he's too deep in well, I think I'll hate this yeah. the book was great but I think I'll hate it so I'm just too afraid because well, I saw a preview and somebody's like you know what forget the script I'm going off the script and it's like you're going to bomb idiot do what you wrote it moron yeah she would let me and she would say things one time I had to pick her up and it was uh, and it was uh, this might get me in trouble but she said uh it wasn't me saying it. She goes, um, why can't Marcus? Where is he? I'm like, he, his friend got cheated on. His friend walked in and found his girlfriend cheating on him. Like, saw it. So he has to be with his friend. She goes, oh, that's terrible. I'm like, yeah, nothing's worse than that. She goes, wow. It'd be worse if it was a black guy. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Mitzi, don't say that. She goes, am I wrong? <laughs> like, nah, you ain't wrong. You ain't wrong. Like, if I walked in and saw you fucking my girlfriend, <laughs> now, or fucking the, Mike Yard, I'd the, be like, all right. The, is there, uh, there's always been a rumor that Roseanne kind of adapted Mitzi's persona and voice. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. She, I, she talked about Roseanne a lot. Like, she sent me a dead rose. I'm like, what's that mean? She goes, I don't know. She hates me or something. <laughs> Mitzi was fucking dark, man. She was fucking crazy. She watched Fox News all the time. She talked about comedians. She had just this history about it. It was fun to like be at her feet, sort of learn, you know, all the stuff she saw. I meant to keep a journal. Like two years in, I should, I should keep a journal about like what people tell me, what I've seen, and I didn't do it. What a mistake! Now the comedy's back. It would have been such a great fucking thing to put, you right. know, eighteen years of what I've learned. Well, uh, uh, what did you start to break through? When did it start to happen for you where you found So it? she made me a lot better. The yeah. struggle made me a lot better. I mean, it was so frustrating. I'd finish off a showcase, uh, you know, B-plus, saw somebody who was shittier get past, go to the main room that was, like, empty back then because it was a fucking dead club, and just throw chairs, pick them up, and just chuck them across, just temper tantrums. The only time I ever asked for a blowjob was with my girlfriend at the time. I got, pa I got failed again. And then she was like, you okay? I'm like, I don't know. Just sad. I'm like... <sighs> Can I have a blowjob? <laughs> Please. She's like, yeah, okay. And I was like, all right. That Christian girl. And uh, it was just frustrating. But it was like that That made me stronger. <clears throat> Struggle makes you like work harder. That's why I say like it's harder for female comics to get ahead. It's not because it's like they're inherently not funny. It's because there's so few of them that when I was still getting not made a paid regular to earn 15 bucks, I wasn't able to do that. They're at the same level. They're getting put on TV shows and things like that. And then it's like, how are you going to work hard when everything's already going well for you? That's why mostly celebrity comics aren't as funny anymore because everything's going well. A few like tr like self-motivate, yeah. so they're okay. Bill Burr like, has a hatred of himself, so he'll keep fucking working hard. Right. You know? But, it but it's like, if you're doing yeah. well, what's the point? Why would I struggle? Why would I work hard? But it would be easy enough just to walk in front of people that weren't your fans. You know what I mean? Like you could do that it's for sure. Always amazing, and Gaffigan does that. Yeah, Gaffigan goes Those into rooms that people don't care who he is. Yeah, and he struggles, and I think that's amazing. Yeah, to put yourself in the position to struggle is yeah. great. So I didn't put myself in that position. She put me in it for me. Yeah. But seven years later, and it's like, oh, now I'm a paid regular. It's like I'm actually pretty good now. You know, yeah. I've worked real hard. I did fucking 10 shows a week. That's a lot. That's not a lot in New York, but that's a lot in L.A. Sure. And uh, <laughs> I worked harder than anybody. Just get up as much as I can. I mortgaged my life. I didn't have any sort of social life. I didn't have a girlfriend. After that one left, it was like, I had a girlfriend for a fucking decade, man. I, I, it was all gone. It was all, the whole life was put on hold. So this trip I just took was like the first vacation I've had in 18 years. You know, where yeah. it's just like, and I wouldn't think of taking one. It wasn't like I shouldn't do, it was just like, I'm just in this. I'm in this all the time. So that struggle she made me have made me way, way, way stronger. Well, a lot of people. And it gave me a work ethic. Yeah. That this thing uh, that you took this strange, four, was it like four months? About four months, yeah. Yeah, tour. Everybody, because you weren't staying in touch with people. Yeah, I locked myself out of social <laughs> yeah. media. Yeah. 
um, Duncan Trussell took your apartment, uh-huh. and he said that I, he goes. I just say because he just got to New York, and he goes, "Yeah, Ari just gave me his apartment until he comes back. He just takes a big rip off a bong, throws his fucking cell phone in the kitchen drawer, and walks out. <laughs> yeah. And then he goes yeah. like this: I hope he's going to be okay. Yeah. And that stayed for four months. Like other people are like, you think Ari's okay? He's not. Then there would be pictures of you, but everybody was very weirded out. Of they're weirded you, out because you guys yeah. are too locked into your fucking normal lives. You gotta get out of your comfort zone a little bit. Yeah. So that's why you did it. You wanted to be. I want to see the world a little too. Yeah. And I know the fucking, all this stuff drags me back in. So I changed my password for my email. I just wanted to change password. I just want my, I just slammed on the keyboard four times and then I cut that and pasted it. And then I made that my Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and Snapchat passwords. And I gave that password to a friend. It was like 38 characters long. And I was like, when I get back, I'll fucking find you and give me the password. And then I couldn't get in there. I couldn't, even if I wanted to, I couldn't access it. So it was fucking great, man. Freedom, dude. <laughs> yeah. Total freedom. Go yeah. where the wind takes you. It was fucking great. I've heard you tell still be there. some of the stories uh, on stage. And discomfort was a big part of it, right? Just yeah. not being comfortable. Yeah. at but all. But then it doesn't even matter anymore. It's the same thing with Mitzi. Where yeah. it's like, it's, it's uncomfortable. But then it's like, I heard Coolio... So I'll tell this to uh, John Stewart once on his old John Stewart show. He had a UPN show. Yeah. And uh, John Stewart was doing the he, – Coolio was talking about drive-bys when he was a kid and having to worry about them. And John Stewart made like a self-deprecating like talk show host joke like, oh, I, didn't, I just had to worry about someone taking my lunch money. But Coolio's point was like, yeah, man, but that in a kid's life, that operates the same – takes the same place in your brain. Like just a negative thing you got to worry about. You know, looking back now as an adult, obviously one's way worse, but to a kid, it feels the same level of emotion. Like, fuck, my life's over. My friend got shot. Or, fuck, my life's over. This kid took my lunch money. Um, yeah, once you get to a place of uncomfortable being the norm, it just stops mattering. Yeah, but you... people go, I could never stay in a hostel. I'm like, are you fucking crazy? People live like animals across the world. Could easily do it. But the thing is, you know what it's like to be comfortable and you know what it's yeah. like to be oh, right. dry when I've it rains. Nice like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're like, I've got money. I could go stay at a hotel. Well, I had a ripcord at any time I wanted. Yeah. If this got too bad, I'm like, I can just use my, I have a lot of money now. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's great. I could just, especially for the way I live, I could just go get a flight home whenever I want. I could just be like, I'm done. I'm out. Right. And I'd be fine. Well, one of the theories was that you were doing it for material, that it was no, going to be for your show. No. Or, yeah. No, I wouldn't mind the material that came out of it. Right. But I just wanted to see the world, and I just had to finish off my responsibilities. And, and where were you exactly? Where are the places you went? Southeast Asia. I, started, I went Myanmar, Thailand, Cambodia, Cambodia, Vietnam, back to Cambodia to go to Indonesia, went through Indonesia, East Timor. Then back to uh, Indonesia for a couple of days, then at home. You know, yeah. the weird thing is Tom Rhodes has played one-nighters in every one of those. Places. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No comedy at all. I went to one show in Phnom Penh. Yeah. Um, they were like, do you want to go out? But I was like, nah, no, thanks. Because I was like, I wanted to see what a long break would do to me. And also, like, if I bombed and fucking Phnom, and then had to put that on my shoulders for the next two months, fuck that. I'm not right. walking around with a bomb. <laughs> I do well my last few sets. I can leave going like I'm a good comic. I don't want to fucking go like, what do you do? When people ask me, I'm like, I don't even know anymore. Um, yeah, it was cool. What I did find, a few things I found, I call my walk about it to find myself. I just want to see the world. It's normal. It's a normal non-American thing just to see things. But when people would ask, like, what do you do back home? What'd you leave? I would ask people too, like, how'd you get out? Of-? People would travel for three months to two years. I was like, how'd you get out of it? I would always be interested in that. Like, how'd you get out of work? How'd you save up money? And also, like, how'd you quit? I was waiting for the someone to say, like, just didn't show up, just left. And I, I didn't hear any of that. But they would ask me what I did. And first, I'd be like, I wouldn't want to tell them. Because it's a very American thing I found is to, the first thing to talk about yourself was how you make money. Which is, like, not, that's not who you are. You know, you're like, I like boating or I like going hiking. That's what who you are. My job's a little different because it is who I am. But like, uh, so people are like, what do you do in New York? And I was like, you know, walk around, hang out with friends, uh, <laughs> get high. It's usually just a conversation starter. So I would just like treat it as that and start a conversation. But if they press, like, but what do you do for money? And I'm like, 
I'm a stand-up comedian. And I mean, across the board, it was like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah. You, what do you mean? I was like, I tell jokes. Like, and you make... You make a living at that? And I was like, yeah, man. They're like, wow. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. I was like, a little bit. I'm like, no, I never heard anything like that. I'm like, what'd you do? I'm like, I don't know. I fucking tied knots on a tugboat. <laughs> <laughs> a fucking shitbox job. I'm like, yeah, I mean, it's a pretty cool job. Like, yeah, it is. It was a, it's a pretty fucking cool life I've, I've gotten for myself. Where I, I'm completely free. I do what I want. I pour piss on anybody's face I want to. No. <laughs> You know, I, you, you know when we were talking about just taking off like that. You know who does that? Fucking Australians. They do. They're everywhere. You see them in the crowd. Like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm on holiday. Oh, yeah, I can't do impressions. Fucking yeah. no, that, never been able seriously, to. that was so fucking <laughs> good. <laughs> you could you could be the Joker. Thanks. But they're like, where are you going? And they're like, New York, then Vegas, Miami, or Miami, Vegas, and L.A., then Hawaii for a while. I'm like, how long are you going for? Like, oh, a month and a half. They do that like every year. Other countries have a real. They, they, they have personal time. In Germany, you get just regular jobs, 25 days of vacation time a year. And you're expected to take it. If you don't take it, you're a fucking moron. You're expected to take it. Plus, you get two weeks of sick time also. And if you get sick while you're on vacation, you get those days back. That's counted as sick time. <laughs> yeah. You get a month and a month and a week of sick, t- of, of vacation time. And you're like, yeah, go. Go see shit. Go do shit. Live your life. Here it's just like get ahead mentality, which I shouldn't talk because I guess that's all I did for fucking 15 yeah. years. But like, I really enjoyed it. I guess I, maybe I should have taken time off. I don't know. Well, there, there's this thing even in America is like when you take your vacation. Yeah. Everybody at work makes you feel bad about it. Oh yeah, I tell leaving. people like leave that fucking phone at home. If you're going with your wife or your husband or your boyfriend or girlfriend, leave your phone home. Get a burner phone when you get there. And then just be able to converse with each other. Uh, people will drag you back in, at least mentally. They'll drag sure. you back in. But I saw this thing in, in Maui once for the Maui Comedy Festival. And fucking Big J couldn't go because he was like, I'm so poor. I can't afford to give it the spot pay for the week to go get a 100 bucks in Maui. A free trip to Maui. I'm like, fuck, man. He's doing better now. but Yeah, he's doing a lot better. Yeah. <laughs> but I saw some husband <laughs> walking like fast. And the wife... And, uh, and with the kids was, was behind him. And I remember him like turning around, like angry, like, come on! We're late! And I was like, dude, you're there already. <laughs> yeah, right. You're in paradise. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it doesn't matter if you miss your snorkeling trip, bro. You're fucking there. The beach is, look right. The beach is right there. And this mentality of like, go, go, go. And I got to an island in Cambodia, Korong. And I, I got a book. And, uh, I just read and I had this feeling like, what should I be doing? What should I be doing? And then after like a day of nothing, it's like, oh, nothing. I'm doing it. Just fucking relax. Go get a beer. You're okay. And then just be able to let go of the, the idea. I mean, it's harder in New York than anywhere. Right. Of, of just fucking be. Just be. But this is the thing that weirded me out with you. So you come back from this thing. Yeah. And then you announce that you're doing two... Netflix specials. It yeah. seems like that's the stuff. Yeah. But, all right, yeah, it should be. But thanks, guys. But that's that's pretty crazy. That while you're doing this, I'm not going to do anything here. You announced this fucking giant. Well, I recorded in November. Yeah. Edited the, the for video before I left, and then it was like I wasn't done with sound. But the editing took longer than I thought, and then I was like, I, I gotta go. So my other guy editing with me, Eric Amos, was like, I directed it. And he was like, Don't go finish it. I'm like, I'm not gonna. No, no, I'm done. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. I just want it was gonna. Everything's gonna drag you back in. I had a chunk of time, and I'm like, You're taking it out of this time. And if I don't come, leave now, I'm gonna start missing stuff on the back end. And so then I left, and I came back, and I convinced the people at Netflix to be like. Yeah, I was like, dude, I'm thinking on a different kind of level now. I'm using my English background, my English degree background, yeah. my time at Edinburgh to think about stuff in a, I don't know, in a different way. I don't know. I was like, dude, fucking do it, dude, fucking do it. <laughs> and then he was like, yeah, okay, we'll do it. And I was like, yeah, fine, good. <laughs> so now it's coming out. So I could, that was frustrating too, going and meeting people like Norwegians mm-hmm. and stuff, and like, can I see your stuff on Netflix? And I was like, mm, no, <laughs> no. Like maybe YouTube, like, oh, blocked in this country. <laughs> Fuck, no, you can't see it anywhere. And then I'm like, yeah, I just like the idea of the access. I want to go see the rest of the world, man. This will help me. And now be able to go out and tour it. Yeah. Yeah. 
and take some time off in between shows and fucking see things and I don't know. Well, you know, this is the thing. I watched you do a lot of sets over the winter and you were doing stuff that happened just recently when you were in Cambodia and yeah. these were hilarious stories. But then yeah. you, then the next time you were doing Old Testament stuff. Yeah. And I'm like, Thinking now, all right, there's your two backgrounds. You know, there's these two yeah. crazy backgrounds. Yeah, two differences. Yeah. That's my next hour. That's what I wanted for my next hour. It was all... I went to Edinburgh twice, mm -hmm. and that was kind of... Um, my agent hated it. He was like, how much are you going to make? I'm like, I'm actually going to lose $10,000. <laughs> and he was like, I have to advise you not to do that. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah, that's your job. And I'm, my job is to say, no, you're wrong. I can grow a lot out of this. So two years in a row. So it's all these like Edinburgh style hours. It's different than American hours. They're theme hours. They're like all about one thing. And it's not as developed as American hours because here the only people doing an hour a year really on a, on, a, on the right level are, are Burr and, and CK. Um, and then you have a few people doing it not quite right. I'm not even on an hour. I go a year and a half to two years. Mm -hmm. I aim for a year, but I fall short. But like. There they do these weird theme stuff. This one side guy, Steve Bougea, did something about a road trip. All a whole hour about this road trip. His girlfriend that he liked in in high school um, was getting married to somebody else, and he, she was like, "Can you pick up my father and, and take him?" And he was like, "Yeah, I'll do anything for you, you know." And his father, her father, had been in prison for eighteen years, and he was picking him up out of prison. And it was the first time he was out in eighteen years, and it was all just about this road trip. And it was so like, wow, you can really like. It reminded me of this English degree background, you know. Where it's like a kind of a work instead of a collection of, like the Van Halen albums were all just songs. Yeah. But then you have a few a few albums here or there where it's about one thing, and you're like, oh, interesting. So I started getting that in my head. So that was this double special. It was like this. I always have through lines, but like this was like it's different. There was children's stuff and adult stuff, so I separated them that way. So this next hour is all gonna be me exercising that fucking Orthodox Jewish background, and really like, you know, mocking it or. Or just exploring it comedically on yeah, stage. I, well, you I, saw what I do. Yeah, it's like, I, I thought the amazing thing about it is that you got into Old Testament stuff that I kind of had that thought of, oh, that's a strange story. But the fact that it's been around for thousands of years yeah. must mean that there's some power to that myth, whatever it is. Yeah. I mean, there's some reason that we held on to that one. Baha'i, the Baha'i faith thinks that uh, they take... Because all the religions are different, but what they say is there's similarities between all religions. Mm -hmm. um, so, like, there's, I'm trying to think what's only Jewish. Um, the tassels. You ever see the tassels they use to fucking tie up hostages and stuff? Uh, that's an only Jewish thing. But the story of the flood is like across lots of religions. Yes. Um, do not kill is across lots of religions. So they virgin say. Virgin birth shows up. Every, what? Virgin birth. Virgin shows birth. Shows a lot of places. Yeah. yeah. Not, we don't have that one, but like a lot of, so they say if, if you missed it, you're right there. <laughs> they say if most religions have it, that must have been one of the original words of God. And then as people like time went on, it kind of shifted and changed. But if it's similar between all of them, that must be, that must date back to the original word. So they take all the original words and say, that's the real religion. I don't have any idea why I brought that up. <laughs> Well, you're saying that's where the, you want this special to go. You want to be able to talk about some of these stories. Yeah. So I want to split it up between like the stories, uh, the laws, and just the culture. Yeah. Just me growing up in this thing. So I don't know how to do it. I, I might fail, but I like challenging myself to do yeah. shit like and that. And plus, no one's ever really done that from your background. Before. Yeah, exactly. Where I yeah. really know about it. I told this story to Rogan once, uh, on like his like fifth podcast. We're still doing it in his like living room. In front of like a laptop that we'd all just, just jump in together and try to be on, but there's a story about <laughs> about Judaism when you masturbate. This is like Kabbalah stuff, but a demon woman sits on top of you and rides you, and you jizz into her, and then she gets. I know it's ridiculous, but she gets pregnant, and then before you go to heaven, you have to meet your fucking demon kids. Uh, yeah, and so like shit like that. That, that like, was my oh. fantasy at 13. <laughs> I feel like this must be a story that's real. Yeah, but I'll, I'll have material about yeah. that sort of thing, where it's like this stuff that I took for granted as a kid, right. but now that I'm removed from it, I'm like, oh, wait. Like, when you realize, like, your father's, your friend's father when you were little, like, oh, he was cheating on his wife. Oh, I get it now. Now that I'm a yeah. little more worldly, I see the situation for what it was. So now that I'm away from religion for 20 years, but still have it deep in me, I can see it. 
from an right. inside and outside perspective. And again, you have the storytelling knowledge on how to put that together. Right. If you would have attempted that when you first started, failed. it wouldn't have worked. I tried early on. I tried to write a bit about, because I lived in Israel for two, two and a half yeah. years. I tried to write a, write a bit about uh, Palestinians and, and Jews. And it came out pretty much like this. Like, you know, Jews do this, fucking punchline, punchline. And then the Palestinians, they're fucking animals. They're all fucking animals. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, that's not uh that's And not only working. the Jews were laughing. Yeah, they're yeah. like, yes! yeah. It's a fucking great bit. Yeah. You have to, you have to grow to be able to do, to do it right, I guess. Yeah. Well, with the, uh, now, a lot of that came from the fact that you put together these storytelling shows, right? Yeah. Think, yeah. Ability yeah. We started that, that seven, eight years ago in the, in the, in the small room of the improv. Um, and then I challenged my, you know, just like, let's do stories once a month. And I got better at it. I wasn't very good when I started. And now it's like, I'm one of the better s- storytelling comics. And that's the same way. It just takes years. Just to, takes years. Yeah. No. How do I do that? I don't know. Give it fucking half a life and then you'll be better at it. Now, you got this show on Comedy Central, mm-hmm. right? You're still producing it, right? No. You're not doing anything with it? No. Now, this show's a hit, right? The show is good. Yeah. So what happened? My special on Netflix will be out uh, July 18th. <laughs> so that's the reason? That's the thing? Because... I can still produce it, but it's not my it's not my product. My yeah. feeling is you put your name on your own product, and you, you don't just take the money when you can. You take your money when you, it's like, this is my name. So I don't put my name on it. So it's not my product anymore. But, that's, but that is your show. It was, yeah, yeah, for a while. And so now you have nothing to do with it at all. You're not... Yeah. You walked away from it. Yeah. Or... But that was all because of these specials? <laughs> It's, it's still, it's still. It's, it's because of some buttheredness, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was, it was because there you will occasionally get pressures to do what's not best for your art form, and you have to, you have to learn to say no to those pressures, and just do what you think is best, no matter what, no matter how much it hurts you. And it does hurt, right? This is. Dude, I built something from fucking twelve people in the side room of the improv lab. I cultivated a, a style. I, I built an aesthetic. I built a thing where you're like, I work with comedians on their stuff. I got them to be like, have no notes. Every time notes would come in, I'd be like, I'll tell the comic. And they just never tell them. Because you know, you know the best I've way I've been to a work comic. This. I've been a comic. I know how it works. I know how to like get cameras out of there in a way and make it look like a real show. I, 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 yeah, the editing, they, at first they were like, no, you, I would want to run something by the comic whose story it was. And I was like, they were like, you can't do that. I'm like, what do you mean? Like, it's precedent. I'm like, what? And then I realized, oh, I can just do it behind their backs. <laughs> and then that started a thing where I would send all the comedians their stories. I'm like, give me your notes. How do you want your shit edited? And I, I would say, no time limits. I'm like, how long is it going to be on TV? I'm like, don't worry about that. Do the full fucking thing the way it's supposed to be done. And then I'll figure out how to make it look right. Yeah, I made, I don't know, man, it's your baby, you know? Mm. Whatever. I can't really, it just sounds bitter when you talk about it, so it's like. Now, here's the thing. I, I, I don't, I had, I dated an artist once. She really freed me. Artistically, the way she talked about her paintings and stuff and what she wants to express and stuff, it made me for the first time think like, well, I can think about this in terms of an art form. It's, it seems silly to talk about dick jokes and throwing piss in someone's face no. as an art form, but she freed me up to think of it like that. And so that, that was nine years ago. And from then on, I really did think of it like that. And so like she said, one of the reasons a lot of artists don't have children is because people have children so they can leave a part of themselves to the world. And artists already have that. They are leaving something to the world. They're painting or they're, they're specials or whatever it is. Like they've already reproduced almost. So you, you do these things and they do become your children. You know? And it's like, I don't know, man. I'm not gonna, whatever. Fuck. I, you know, I don't. Sort of, it's just all buttheredness. It's real. It's real shit. Yeah. I threw a glass of water in a comedian's face, this female comedian stage, on, at, at the comedy store, because I was fucking butthurt. I understand it's like a real thing. But like, 
nonetheless, I would never have stopped doing that show. Now, did it did it occur to you, hey, I won't go to Netflix with these specials. I'll just hand them over to somebody else. Or when the pressure came in, yeah, it was like, it was like I, yeah. It would have been, no, at that point it would have been, okay, I'll say no to Netflix, but I'll never give you my special. I'll film myself on, on sitting on a car hood for 45 minutes and saying, here it is. Run that. I, I would never, I would. I, so I it got, know, it got pretty angry between you guys or did it just end quickly? No, it got pretty angry. They said they would put, here's the problem. So I'm an observer over the rest of what happens in comedy. Mm -hmm. This situation, people leaving a project, it's not unique. It's happened. And when people talk about it themselves, it only comes off as bitter. So there's no way to, there's no way to say it without seeming like an angry, you know what I mean? Sure. I get that completely. Yeah. But at the same time, I, I get the fact that when somebody creates something, that they're the ones that, that knows how it's supposed to run. Yeah. They I talk mean, about loyalty and I'm like, dude, what the fuck are you talking about? You, you offered me to do a show for you and I gave you a fucking great show. I, I overproduced. I overdelivered. So what the, what the fuck? Keep doing it. Like, who cares? So I'm putting my, like, it's a double special. It doesn't fit on fucking HBO. It fits on a digital platform. That's what I mean. It's the right place for the art form. Maybe the next one would fit on linear television, but this one doesn't. So like, what are you upset about? Just, just let it go. And then they fucking, whatever. Well, I think what gets to me is that most people have that defining moment in their life and they blink, right? Yeah. That's what we do, That's most we of do. us. And you decide it not to. They, I was poor for too long, man. Yeah. They made a monster. Mitzi made a monster. Yeah. I can be poor again. You guys have no idea how I lived in fucking Southeast Asia. Yeah. And the beds I slept in, the disgusting environments. The squat shits I took constantly, <laughs> wiping with your hand, just, it's not, I can live like you can't believe how I can live. So yeah, the, the, you want to blink and then you step back and you go, these are the, these are the price, these are the prices that I'm going to pay. These things. And it sucks, but it's just like, that's just part of it. You want to be free? You want to be free that you have to, you have to. Get fucked over once in a while. It's okay. It's okay. It's part of it. Do you feel free because of this experience? I am completely free. Yeah. The only thing, the only thing that doesn't set you free <laughs> is when you have like things pulling at you. So like Chris Rock would talk about, no, no, no. Patrice would talk about, about Chris Rock and Tracy, Tracy Morgan, where you owe people. So I don't know anybody. I, it's just myself. I can walk away from anything. I, I have, I, $13,000 was the most I made one year. Was like, wow, I'm living in it now. I got 13 grand instead of 11. I don't have big tastes. I don't need to buy nice cars. I don't have taste for any of that. Joe's Pizza is pretty good. You know, I don't need steak. It's okay. It's hard. So this part, it wasn't the money that I'm walking away from. That part was like nothing. I, I don't blank at all on that. It was the pressure from my other people that I'm working with, who I'm putting them out of work. That's the only hard part. Where they were like, that was the pressure. They're like, you'll put your crew out of work in two weeks out and good luck having them pay their rent. And then it's like, well, I wasn't, I'm not ready for that. So how do I, how do I handle that? So now I know. So the way I handled it was I had to walk away. That they, whatever, they forced me to walk away. But like now I know that I can't allow that pressure in anymore. You know, sure. I, I've, I've pushed away the money pressure. That's fine. I'll only do what's best for the art form. I've pushed away everything else. But the pressure of people counting on me. I, heard, I talked to Chris Hardwick once. He was going to Vancouver to play some show. I was like, why don't you go to Whistler afterwards and go skiing? You know, and I'm in his skis. He's a rich guy. And uh, he was like, I can't. I'm like, why? He goes, I got work. I'm like, yeah, but you're the work. You're fucking Nerdist. That's you. And he goes, yeah, but if, Ari, if I take a week off, 54 people take a week off. Yeah. And I'm like, you put yourself back in prison, man. That's what happened, by the way, to Jerry Garcia because everybody was paid well yeah. at this giant thing and everybody was getting a hundred thousand. And here's this hippie thing that turned into him working for a corporation. Yeah. And, and if I want to do a roast battle and give three weeks of my life to work on jokes for three weeks for zero dollars because it's a funny thing to do, then I want to be able to 
do that instead of saying, well, I got to do this fucking job job. So now from now on, now that I'm free of that pressure, every time I work with somebody, I'll have to let them know, like, listen, I'm kind of an asshole. So you're Don't not going to understand. Don't even say kind of. Right. <laughs> so you're not going to understand. But at some point, I'm going to have to just leave something. And you're, you're not, it's not going to make sense to you. But if you want to work with me, you're going to have to know that that's a possibility. And I'll, I'll make you money in the meantime. But it might come to that. That's, I think it's amazing. I think very few people do that. And I think this just, is. Yeah. Yeah. It just there is a price sometimes, and that price fucking sucks. You're like, come on, yeah. don't make me pay, <laughs> but you have to. Well, you know, Frankenstein had his monster, and this is Mitzi, Mitzi's monster, everybody. Yeah, yeah it is. Ari Shapir, thanks, bro. That was fucking great. 